Hey everyone, and welcome to Comics from the Multiverse, episode 100. This is a DC Comics podcast from Mailfuzz TV. I am Peter, and joining me on this 100th special occasion is Matt. Yeah, 100! Woo! <laughs> also here, Connor. Yeah, 100 of these things. I know, it's been, been, been two years since we started this. Yeah. Let's start a rebirth. But Connor's only still talked about one Doomsday Clock, so... <laughs> two! I went two! <laughs> yeah. And Connor's the only Connor who's existed in those two years as well while we're at no, it. No, no, that's not even, that's not even remotely true. <laughs> two times tomorrow, sucker. <laughs> okay, they gave you one alternate future story to, to, to appease right. you, but not really in that continuity. That's me. Yeah, he's, 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 he's vaporware. He's, he doesn't exist. It's fine. Uh, we talk about DC Comics on this show. And on this week's 100th episode, we are going to be talking about Batman 45, Superman 45, Justice League 43, Green Lanterns 45, Nightwing 43, Mr. Miracle number 8, Batwoman 14, Super Sons 15, Aquaman 35, and Brave and the Bold, Batman and Wonder Woman number 3. And if you're thinking, wait a minute, something's missing from that list. Action Comics 1000 was this week. How could we miss that? We didn't miss that. We gave that its entire own special episode, which also ran about two hours. That's already up. You can go check that. It's on the channel. It's on the the, the, the podcast feed. You did, go go check that out. That was a whole yeah. other episode. You know, you're gonna put a link in here. Sure, I'll put a link in the description. Like right, right, right there. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, there. he's giving you. He's giving you work. He's yeah, calling a box in you. Uh, you can't really do that on YouTube anymore, though. Matt, to be fair. Really? I can make it come up in my corner up here. Uh... But the old annotation system's gone because they replaced it with the end screen. But it looks much slicker, though. It's much better. Yeah, and that's fine. I just. Yeah. It was annoying though. I have to shut those off sometimes because people will try to get cute and put yeah. them in the middle. Yeah, uh, that's what I just tried to do. But it, it was nice for some things. Like I, I like the idea of like drawing a box around one of us, that, and if you clicked on our face, it take you to our Twitter or something like that. That was like, a nice yeah. idea, but still, it was quite messy and that, that's I much more you. streamlined now. Much more streamlined. Um, and if you're an audio listener, you don't care about any of this because it doesn't affect. Not you. What you care about is the fact that this was a huge week. It was a pretty big week, and that, you know, even after Action Comics, is a huge week. But on top of talking about the books this week, uh, because it's the 100th episode, we're going to do something special at the end as well. We have all compiled our top 10 uh, lists, our, and what we're going to do is we're going to do our top 10 uh, DC stories each. Um, so that, that... He just changed it on us, Connor. He's like, actually, we're doing the top villains. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, don't, we're, don't, we're doing... don't be pulling this shit. It was bad enough when he did it during the action <laughs> comics. Yeah, because uh, yeah, this this list was difficult. So at yeah. least for me, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my my list. If you ask me again in a week, might be completely different. Yep. Oh sure, well, mine yeah. changed twice this morning. I I, I I I concur with these thoughts. I I also sort of ruled out certain things just based on like oh I've not had enough time to really process that and let it sort of. You know, be part of my oh, comics yeah, no, Nothing on mine is is post two thousand and eleven. I don't think. I think so, I have I have one thing that's. Uh, I think I've got one sneaking in, but I I otherwise typically avoided it because I thought no no I'll, I'll pick things that I've had for a long time and I know that I love <laughs> and so on and so forth. So, um, but there'll, but there'll, there'll definitely be honorable mentions that I think we'll all throw in because we'll feel bad about leaving certain things out. <laughs> um, but hey, well, there might be one thing. There might be one- <laughs> Uh, I think I know what it is. I think I can guess. I think I do too. Yeah, I think I can guess quite easily. Uh, so that's coming at the end of the show after all the usual business. But before we even get to the usual business of books, we have news because we actually had the solicits for July this week. So, you know, it's keeping us busy. So I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll skip the small talk. The, oh, how are you this week, Matt? I don't care how you were this week, Matt. You were reading comics. I know you were reading comics because I was also reading comics because there was a lot of comics to read. Yeah, I actually stored mine up till Friday. That's why I didn't get done till this morning. So. <laughs> uh, I, I did okay spreading them out, actually. I did okay. Uh, that said, but I had to re-skim a few books before we started because the books that I read on Wednesday before we did the Action Comics episode feel like a, an eternity ago. It feels like, oh, no, that, that was months ago now. I can barely remember yeah. what was in those books. I, I did revisit my, my top two stories, though, from Action Comics 1000. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, you want to know what that is? Go Go watch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we we did our top five stories from Action Comics at the end of uh, at the end of the episode. So it's a full full whole episode that it was. It's funny because I I, I kind of thinking oh maybe it'll be about an hour or so long or and it ended up we got to like an hour point and it was like okay we've talked about all the stories after an hour so we'll maybe have another twenty minutes of talking about <laughs> Superman and whatnot 
It was almost two hours long. It was like an hour fifty something. So mm-hmm. yeah, you, yeah. You got a full bonus episode. Uh, so news though, we had news from the solicits. We had some other news, some rumours that are kind of juicy, uh, but they are very much rumours and be, to be taken with grains of salt. But we'll start with the solicit uh, information first. Now, obviously, I, I looked through. I got a bunch of stuff. Uh, credit to Newsaram is what did we learn from the solicits for sort of compiling a. a more condensed version to read at the end of the week because I didn't have to scour through the actual solicits again, um, which I did at the start of the week. But and looking for this again for the new for the show, you know, it's just easier. Yeah, just to trying to find the, the key points. A compilation of all the stuff. Uh, so, but as always, there might have been more little little tidbits that you may have noticed. So let us know about them if we do miss any. Um, but what we have here. So first up, um, so in July, a bunch of the double shipping books are hitting issue fifty. And much like the issue 25s of those books, they're going to be uh, extra sized, extra dollar each, and be bigger. Uh, even more than that, Batman 50, which is the wedding issue, is going to be even bigger than the rest of them and cost $5. That's a big, big wedding issue extravaganza. They're, they're blowing it all out. As, as it should be. Yeah. That's coming from a known uh, non Batman man. So. Yeah, the only negative point to this, uh, eagle eyed people might have noticed, is that issue 51 seems to be $4. When it goes back down, so it seems like Batman switching to three ninety nine uh, on a permanent basis. Given it's its highest, the highest selling book, I get the temptation. Um, and as as much as obviously we like cheaper books, I'm always going to like cheaper books. Uh, I I find it hard to be super upset about it because it was always going to happen eventually, and we got two years of all the books mostly being two ninety nine. So yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we're assuming it's staying double shipping, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. But that's the thing, Justice League's double shipping at $4, so there's precedent it is, for it. It so. is, yeah. Yeah, but as long as it's those two and not every double ship or anything, it'll be yeah, fine. I feel it's going to be a mix of some things switching to single at $4 and some things going to double. Uh, but it's going up to $4. But it'll be, I think the 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 balance between them might even out a little bit, just yeah. based on what you're already buying. Uh, obviously, if you start wanting to add a lot more new books, which we might be, <laughs> given all the stuff that we're getting rumours for, uh, that's when we start making decisions. But <laughs> at least for now, that seems to be the case. Uh, so yeah, so $5 Batman 50, big, big issue. It's something like 48 pages. Uh, all the other 50s are all uh, a bit longer at $4. Um, and that also extends to uh, issue 25s of the single shipping books. Uh, the one notable one is Batgirl, which is hitting issue 25 in July, so that's also a bigger issue at $4. It has multiple stories in it. Uh, The notable thing here, though, is that Hope Larson is done with the book. She actually confirmed on Twitter that uh, issue 23, I think it is, is her last uh, last thing. She's focused on some original graphic novels and some uh, novels she's writing, so she's leaving comics for a little bit. So it's a shame, because we like her run a lot. Mm -hmm. But she seems to be going out on her terms. It's it's not like a, hey, your book's ending, go away kind of thing. Uh, uh, Meerkhead Scott uh, seems to be the new writer. She's at least doing an arc, starting with one of the stories in issue 25, and she's going to be around for the next, I imagine, four or five issues, at the very least, if not. Uh, yeah, there. I think she said it is just an arc, right? She said she's doing an arc, but uh, that could maybe let you know become more. Uh, it could, yeah. Yeah, so who's to say? Uh, she's done a couple of fill-ins. She's done the fill-in in Green Arrow in July as well, because we're not getting the, the regular run with the Bensons until August, so... Yeah. Uh, so no, no idea what to expect I have heard good things I think she did some Transformer stuff at IDW and I've heard that people like that who have read it so mm-hmm. but nothing to base my own opinion on as of yet yeah I'm not familiar with it but hopefully good obviously we'll be ch- checking it out we'll check out issue 25 and see how it goes uh, the other stories uh, one's by uh, Margaret Bennett and one's by Paul Denny so uh, things to look forward to in issue 25 a Batgirl in July uh, next up here's something that Connor's going to complain about uh, so Terrifics number 6 has a different artist so we didn't even get three in a row with Shayna. Issue six is going to be uh, Joe Bennett. Although the interesting part of this is that he's actually currently also drawing Immortal Hulk uh, at Marvel. But uh, so, How many Hulk books are there? Just the one. They, they, they just keep changing the name. But it's, it's just oh, one book geez. pretty much all the time. That plus the, the, the weird Hulk thing. Wolverine Hulk. No, we don't oh, talk about that. Yeah, we're not talking about Weapon H. We're not, <laughs> we're not yeah, talking yeah. about it. No. You know, I last week I jumped into a a why on that, and I went digging for answers, and I didn't like the answers I got. It's the most '90s thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Is it just because? Well, yeah, it was. Uh, and this origin's super bland, and what do you think it would be? And it's just 
Someone All said, that's missing from that design is pouches. Someone in the exec room went, hey, what if, Wolverine, what if Hulk had Wolverine claws? And that's the, mm-hmm. that's how the, the, the event was born. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't like, at least both Wolverine and, and Hulk have that tragic origin, right? Mm. Where, they, where they can't, you know, they can't help but being the monsters they are. This dude's just a special forces guy that opted into the program. Is he the villain? It makes more sense to me if he's the villain that, that others yeah. have to take down. But yeah. I don't know if he is. No, I don't think he is, because the, the whole oh. thing is about him. Yeah. Oh, well. I, I don't know. It's just, you have Immortal Hulk, you had Totally Awesome Hulk, and you had, like, how many name changes? Uh, a lot. Just yeah. call it an Incredible Hulk. I just go but go to the original name that everyone likes. Ah, uh, you'll be getting that next year. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Immortals, the stills will start to lag. But, oh, no, we'll call Incredible Hulk again. That'll get the people back. Yeah, uh, exactly. But anyway, go on, Connor. Complain about the new artist on Terrifics. <laughs> Girl, you want to. I, I mean, this is even more disappointing that I'm not even getting the amount of Shane that I expected. That was the highlight of this book for me. That was promised. I wouldn't say it was a highlight. I just like the the concept. No, of the I, writing, I would but... promise Fantastic Four done properly. Yeah, that's, sure, that's what I but, would But you know, when they said, "Oh, and it, it's going to be Shane doing it," because that was yeah. at the announcement, I was like, "Okay, don't, yeah." Don't get me I wrong. Lemire is enough for me. I'm I'm still excited for it. Uh, it's weird that Shader's not even doing the three issues that he was supposed to do. Um, it seems to be because they, they they keep saying, "Oh, he's great for these other things," and they're putting them on other stuff because he he's you know he, he's probably one covers. thing and let him sit there. He, he keeps yeah. posting stuff on Twitter of like stuff he's working on. I'm like, oh, that's not terrific. That's not terrific. But most of the stuff <laughs> he does is the the covers, though. Yeah, he does a lot of covers. Yeah. So, he did uh, a Man of Steel issue, but of course that that's kind of I imagine that's why he didn't start in Terrific Steel issue four is because he probably was getting that Man of Steel issue done first. But probably, uh, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. But hey, uh, uh, next up, um, also from Solicits, we're still on that. Uh, Steve Orlando is starting an arc on Wonder Woman, starting with issue fifty one. But it does specifically say he and he also says as well himself on Twitter he is a guest writer. He's doing one arc. And then he also confirmed on Twitter that the next full-on regular team for Wonder Woman are starting after him. They're just prepping the run uh, whilst he's sort of filling in an arc. So, that's somewhat good news. We've got the regular team coming. Yeah, yeah it's good news that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Exactly, light he, at the end of the tunnel. He is not that light. He is not that light, no. I mean, I'll try what he does. I'll see I'll see what the first issue is like. But here's the thing, this is what I was saying to Connor during the week. Because we know that we were getting the new run coming soon, and it's in the, the foreseeable future, I'm less inclined to actually just drop the book right now, because I don't want to just miss a handful of issues. That'll annoy me. The OCD in me does not want to just miss an arc. See, yeah, you, you say that, and then... You know, I used to say that, and then Lobdell was writing Superman... <laughs> and I've never gone back. I have a big gap in my Superman. I I, I, know, uh, I know, Matt. I know, but like, uh, so. it, hey, at least we know there's a new team coming. Hopefully, it's a new team that we like, and hopefully, this art from uh, Orlando's no more than say six issues. Hopefully, it's less than what that. What they're not telling us is the books didn't change its name to Wonder Woman and Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did note there was no mention of Jason in Orlando's yeah, the list. Yeah, that, so. that was something I noticed as well. There's no mention of Jason. I hope so. this has all been revealed to be a fever dream. So, like, so my hope the, is the, that... the gas leak story. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> my my hope is that uh, it's going to like Robinson's run ends with his death. Like it's all contained to Robinson's run, and he's going to kill him on his last issue, issue fifty. Yeah, which means I can just quite happily just not read anything now. Like, all right, it's nearly over. I don't, I don't need to worry that I'm missing like huge things that are going to go on forever. That's the hope. That's the hope. I mean, it's a quieter week next week when Wonder Woman's out, so I'm sure me and Matt will check it out and see if we're, we can endure Maybe. the pain for a little bit more. Uh, you're going to, Matt. You know you are. Don't, 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 don't deny it. Maybe. No. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. I, I, actually, I heard a rumour Matt Zod's in the next issue. Uh, anyway, yeah, so, so, guys. <laughs> so next up, <laughs> next up, from the solicits, uh, we have a new team on Green Lanterns, which is surprising to me. I really thought Celia was setting up for a longer run than this. I mean, it's not been super short. It's not been as short as Humphreys on uh, Nightwing, by any means. It's been a few arcs, at the very least. But It'll be about, what, 15, 20 issues? Yeah, which is, which, yeah, which is not mm-hmm. super short. But um, but we have Dan Jurgens. Uh, we know what he's doing next. He's actually going to be on Green Lanterns. He's taken over uh, Mike Perkins on the art, uh, starting in July. Uh, seems to still be sticking with double shipping, but now we have Jurgens. Uh, the cover for the uh, the first issue actually went up. Hal's on the cover with the, the two that are currently in the book with Jessica and Simon. Yeah. So I don't know if that means that he's going to be there permanently or if he's just done that issue setting up the next story, maybe. Hard to say. Yeah. 
Nah. As a fan of Jurgens, I am not upset with this. I, I, I think I, if I'm recalling the solicits right, I don't have them in front of me. Mm. It's kind of like a, a murder mystery where so, someone's died and the, Jessica's and Simon's rings are both essentially framing the other one. Oh, interesting. And it's mm-hmm. trying to figure out, okay, what happened? That's an interesting story. Uh, who knows if this is the start of a, a big run for Jurgens, if he's like in his Green Lanterns or if this is just an arc or two uh, before they do something else with him. Who knows? Um, but uh, this is cool. I'm, I'm enjoying Seeley's run well enough. Don't get me wrong, but this this is pretty exciting. I, I like Seeley. I like Jurgens. Uh, so there's not a whole lot to be upset with. Uh, I am curious as to what Seeley's going to be doing. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, post summer. He's still on Hellblazer. Uh, but that sounds like it's ending. In fact, one of the things I've got here is that the issue 24 solicit for July, it has the thing where it sounds mm-hmm. like it might be the last issue. Much like New Superman did last month and for the June solicits, and now New Superman is nowhere to be found in the July solicits. So Hellblazer might be done uh, yeah. after July. It may well, uh, which is disappointing in that sense. You know, that's I think that's been pretty good for, uh, from what I've been reading. And also just, you know, the, the sense that DC typically have been doing the final issue tags. When it's our last issue, yeah, I of, really wish they'd just. That. Yeah, I wish they'd made it, made it, just make it clear. Just let us know. Say it's the final issue. Go. go they the used bang. to be really good at that. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I don't know why they've stopped it. I don't know if there's a reason for it. Maybe someone can has some speculation as to why and what benefits them by not just telling us it's the final issue. Uh, yeah. It is because they've not decided yet. They're hoping that maybe in the next month they'll change their mind. <laughs> like the, oh, that might be it. Maybe they're waiting for the next issue sales to come in and go in. Maybe. All right, well, we'll see how this one does, and then okay, you can have another arc depending on this sort of thing. Because that's actually what happened in your Superman. It was meant to end with issue 18, and they got another basically six issues out of it, seemingly. So. Which is, yeah, not bad at all. For what that book is, that's pretty I good. Know. Yeah, it's great. So I'll be sad to see New Superman go. Uh, obviously, I'm not reading Hellblazer, so I'm not as upset about that. But uh, hey, uh, also oddly missing from the solicits uh, is Raven, Daughter of Darkness, number seven. That is a 12 issue uh, maxi series, and issue six is coming out in June. Seven is just missing. So, I mean, I, some might speculate that might be gone. Given that it's meant to be 12 issues, though. I'm would... more inclined to think it's just taking a month off in the middle. Yeah, I'm inclined that's to think that as well, as opposed to just being like cut. Um, yeah, you know what Mr. Miracle did? It took, it took the you know the little break yeah. in the middle. But it's not as high profile that it's getting a lot of news about it being missing. Yeah. Just, you know, I've, right. I've seen barely anyone mention yeah. it. <laughs> Even Wolfman was like, I can't continue. That's, like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit harsh, man. Well, I, that's how I felt about the first Raven mini. Yeah, yeah. So, maybe, maybe this one's better. Who knows? It could be. Yeah, it could yeah. be better. Uh, oh, no, there was stuff I liked about it. There was stuff I liked about that Raven mini. It just uh, The more it went on, the more it, like, the storytelling yeah. just started to buckle under itself. Yeah. But hey, uh, so uh, next up, so here's here's a little story thing for Batman coming up. Apparently, at the end of the solicit for Batman Fifty One, there's a, 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 a one sentence that says, "What is Dick Grayson doing running around the city dressed as Batman?" And then also in the Batgirl Twenty Five solicit, uh, there's a line that says, uh, "Dick is subbing as Batman when Bruce Wayne is out of action." So we're it's getting on his honeymoon, obviously. <laughs> so we're getting some Dick as Batman. Yeah. Uh, now, obviously, when we talk about Batman this week, there's technically some Dick as Batman this week as well, but that's very different uh, yeah, from what this different. sounds like. So, so no, uh, so I thought that was worth mentioning. I also think it's worth mentioning the Justice League number three solicit. It mentions we're getting John Stewart with an ultraviolet lantern. So, that's yeah, thing. I'm, I'm intrigued. It's the first time we've got a major expansion of the core yeah. in a while. It's worth mentioning. It doesn't. It doesn't sound like there's going to be a core. It's just something that he yeah. gets. It's, it, probably something to do with the source ball, source ball breaking, and something that comes from there that manipulates yeah. the rings or something. Who knows? I mean, but if you're talking about spectrums of light, ultraviolet is one. I just don't want this to also be an infrared lantern. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> okay, no, I see where you're going. Like, okay, does you know this I mean? spiral from here? Yeah. yeah. That, that's all. That said, with how crazy Snyder likes to get, it wouldn't surprise me if we're going down some sort of rabbit hole of... I'm, I'm okay with it, though. I mean, sure, there's a lot of colours already, but yeah, why not? It being Justice it. League is a little bit more interesting just because it's not just going to be dealing with that. It'll be the entire team dealing with right. what, what happens with this. So that's a bit more interesting, at least, I think. Uh, so there you go. Uh, so that's the stuff from the solicits. If there was other little things that you think are worth mentioning, uh, do let us know. Uh, but that's what was sticking out to me. Um, next up, let's talk about some rumours then. Uh, Bleeding Cool, the infamous Bleeding Cool. Uh, oh, we shouldn't say their names. Uh, we really shouldn't, but... 
I, I like it's worth mentioning. They, they they are not the greatest journalists in the world. In fact, the one the first thing I'll mention about all these articles they put up in the last couple of days with these rumors is that they spend most of the articles patting themselves on the back for getting things right in the past, rather than just telling us what the what the news is. Um, I wonder what they all over uh, Reddit. It was it was the same thing to where. Oh, you know, they're always right. No, no, they're not always right. No. They've been right. This is the but... thing. I wonder what the, the, the batting average is like. Yeah, they, they're pointing out these are all the things we were right on, but how many things have you been wrong on? Uh, this is the funny thing. I feel like it, it's probably not that terrible. It's probably like 50-50, but they're so smug about when they're right. It's hard to... It is, yeah. Root for and them. I think also the problem is it's just the actual journalism of it is atrocious. Even it when is. they're right... Is, they don't feel professional. It feels like you know some dudes with a blog. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. uh, so Scuttlebutt coming out of uh, uh, retailer things and conferences and whatnot, buying closed doors, diamond stuff, um, is stuff that may be happening with DC. Now, for some reason, they're, they're determined to say this is kind of a relaunch and they're calling it DC Fresh Start, so much so that they made an image for it. I don't think it's that at all. I think this is some no. new books with new creative teams. That's I, it. I'll tell you the, the first reason why it's not fresh start is one year fresh start is kind of a line-wide initiative two they're not even talking about cancelling books they're just adding things yeah they're just oh here's here, here's another wave of titles essentially it's wave three of rebirth I and guess. also yeah but and also they're not doing a line-wide relaunch of sorts two months after justice league and odyssey and dark all start yeah that's that would be stupid it's just some new books Who that's are they, marvel <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they would well, not. honestly we we might get one uh, like another relaunch ish in the future. After Doomsday Probably, Clock, may, maybe after Doomsday Clock, yeah. I can see them making a big. Okay, here's a new big marketing push. I'm okay with that. That makes oh, yeah, sense. That's fine. Yeah, I'm okay with that. That's, uh, that's the comics industry, and I'm okay with that. What, what right. bugs me about this is them trying to make it something it's not, just to to, right. to to get more buzz, just so people can call it something. It's weird. But anyway, so these are a lot of big names that are getting thrown around here, right? So grain of salt, but here's what the reporting is apparently happening. Uh, Grant Morrison with Liam Sharp on Green Lantern. Um, and given that Halen Pals is, you know, like Vendetti's leaving after issue 50, it wouldn't be that ridiculous to think that's getting replaced with another Green Lantern book, and this could be it. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know if they'll replace it with a new number one. They might just rename it Green Lantern, but keep it at 51. I think I, they'll I renumber don't know why you don't... I, I think they'll renumber it for Morrison. I, the same yeah. reason why they renumbered for Bendis and they renumbered for Snyder taking over Justice League, I think you renumber for yeah, Morrison. No, they, they very well could. Yeah. yeah. And, and here's the thing: I know that Morrison was supposed to be working on the Green Lantern Earth One before it went to the the creator that it did. Right. That was. A he had, yeah. Yeah. He had he had a pitch for it. Uh, and maybe and so they like that pitch. If, yeah. Yeah, and maybe he's going to bring some of that um, and adapt it towards this. So potentially in in August we'll have Jurgens and Morrison. Doing the Green Lantern universe. Potentially, yeah. I, assuming it's... So, I mean, the reason why we're assuming it's Hal and Paul's that it'd be replacing is because that's the one that the run's just about to end right before this. So it, it just it, makes sense. It, it, it's 50, issue 50 is the, the first issue in August. So it kind of lines up. It does. Yeah. Uh, I don't see it being double shipping, though, with Morrison. I feel like it'll probably go single. No. Yeah. Uh, in the past, I'd say it could have been, but he's doing his... Uh, I think he's still doing the editor-in-chief stuff of Heavy Metal. Yeah, so, so he's a busy he's, dude. He's a busy, um, yeah. So I, I think it'll change its title. It may be Green Lantern Core, it may just be Green Lantern. Although I think it'd be weird having Green Lantern and Green Lanterns. I feel like if it's going to be called Green Lantern, it'd have to change the name I, of Green Lantern. I think it has to be Green Lantern Core, yeah. this one. Yeah. Which, which, which would be fine. Um, absolutely or fine. Or Tales of the Green Lantern Core. Or... Yeah, whatever, whatever Honestly, variation. Honestly, Morrison doing Green Lantern Core is far more... Because Green Lantern usually yeah. implies, okay, it's an Earth Lantern that we're following, whereas Core yeah. is a bit more varied, and that's where... Morrison's yeah, oh, and that's why I liked when Tomasi was writing. In, in between mm. Dave Gibbons leaving and Sinestro Core War, it was like Tomasi had a rotating like cast, yeah. and I really liked that because it really made it feel like... A, it's really nice seeing the other parts of yeah. core instead of yeah. just a well, handful. And, and like you got um the, the, the one from Thanagar, the guy from Ran. I remember Isomot. It was yeah. Bath, Sarn. You know, they're not supposed to be friends, you know, they they warring planets, but they're sector partners. Yeah. You know, Honestly, it's the, stuff you, like that. The best part of Hal and the Green Lantern core has been when, okay, here's all the rest of the core, we'll focus on all that stuff. And we get you know all the unusual pairings. Yeah. So I'm down for more of that. So no, um, obviously, should this be true? And we we'll have to again say grain of salt. Uh, there's no obviously it's exciting. Sharp's a great uh, artist. Very different for Green Lantern as well, which is nice. Shake things up a little bit in terms of the look. Yeah. Um, and obviously Morrison does his big bombastic stories. 
He does. Uh, the, the little bit of the lanterns we got in Final Crisis that shows that he has a love for those, you know, for that region. Mm. So yeah. I, I, I really would love to see Morrison take it on and do a big space opera with him. Yeah. No, well, no. yeah, I want him to leave his own mark. You know, kind of Venditti has, you know, and it's not the best mark, but it's, you no, know, it's Venditti the Venditti era. Has been mixed, but it's but yeah, undeniably but, his. Because here's the thing, yeah. if you get, like, Morrison on that Green Lantern book, alongside the stuff, because obviously, like, to Jessica and Simon and the other book, right. but if you get Morrison on, like, sort of spearheading the Green Lantern line, you've got... Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of like how Wonder Woman was was with Rucker. Like the idea you have yeah, like one yeah. big name with each family of books that's kind of the yeah. star who's yeah, kind of leading that. It. it would be interesting as well because obviously you know we talk about a lot how we we like it when they do the space cop thing. Mm. But yeah. if if Jurgens is doing you know, the the murder mystery sort of thing with that, that's kind yeah. of that angle already. So that leaves Morrison. Well, to that's fine. Do his as long as there's Morrison. one that's doing this, as long as there's one that's doing the space cop and one that's doing the space opera, I'm okay with it. You know. Yeah. Mm. But when they're both doing space cop, or they're both doing space it's a opera, bit redundant, doesn't it? Yeah, and so they're taking up the same air, and I I just feel like and, and that's more why in New Fifty Two when there was four of the bloody books, it was too much. Yeah, they couldn't sustain it. It was no, and that's why it went down down to two. You know, yeah, like you can handle two, but with Morrison, he can do either. So I'm curious to see what side he would pick. So. Mm. Uh, but the, 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 it would be exciting. Uh, the next thing uh, is Brian Ar- Azzarello doing Suicide Squad. And given that that book's kind of just been... It's a solid seller for DC. Uh, you know, there's a reason why it was double yeah. shipping until just it's about now. It's, it's also just switched. But Azzarello doing Suicide Squad, and apparently the fact that he did uh, Joker is part of the, the inspiration for why yeah. he's been sort of picked as this. Because um, if, you, if, you, if you've read his Joker graphic novel, I mean, obviously Joker's a factor in it, but the main character is like this lackey who works yeah, for him. just one of the henchmen. Yeah, so the idea of him having like a team of like these you know henchman type characters, obviously they'll be more notable than he was because they'll actually be names. You know, it'll be Deadshot and it'll be whoever. But but they're still ultimately kind of B list yeah, henchmen. Who, exactly at, at their heart, that's why they're on the Suicide he, Squad. He also is is great for that gritty crime stuff. Yeah, you know, it's a hundred bullets. And... So this could be the shot in the arm that makes Suicide Squad like a a book to be read with. As Rutherford's name alone would make me pick up the first issue. Now, if I would continue, that all depends if it hooks me, but I would check it out. Just I, yeah. I don't think I've ever read anything bad from Azzarello. I mean, I'm, I'm doing it wrong. Maybe he well, has bad stuff out there, but I've I never read it. Yeah, I couldn't get into 100 Bullets because it was too gritty. It wasn't my thing, but it I, was by no means yeah. bad. I, I liked what I read 100 Bullets. Um, it's the sort of thing where I read the first trade enough time passed by that I'd have to reread it to read the rest of it so I'm just kind of waiting until yeah. one day I'm in the mood to binge the whole thing at some point because yeah. there's yeah, too many yeah, yeah. But, you know, intricacies and in characters like, just you forget all of it once you've been away for a while yeah but no that's definitely a name that and you, you partner him with any number of artists and you know it could yeah. it could be something he, special he attracts amazing artists as well uh-huh. yeah yeah, no, and also I think he, he had, this is the sort of thing where Suicide Squad typically I have a trouble finding appeal in it uh because, but him doing his darker, grittier version of it, it actually feels like a, uh, I don't know, D- DC's version of a. I don't want to say the wire, but like just something where it's like all these like murky no, well, characters. Yeah. Like, I, you could totally up in the whole Amanda Waller thing and do a mm, new take on Suicide Squad. You in know, fact, make um, love. And here's here's why I'm saying Green of Salt and all this because a lot of this feels like dream. Like casting, yeah. it's like it, does, it feels too perfect, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, here's the perfect person for that. Yeah, you all want it. Now, admittedly, the next two are a little bit more kind of random, hence maybe given oh, to the idea know. that that these are actually something that is. Because like, would anyone necessarily just think Aquaman, Kelly Sue DeConnick? Would people actually absolutely jump not jump to that? No, we've we've we only just been talking but, about her doing some DC work lately. So, but that's but, the thing. Foot in the door. So she's working yeah, on a DC exactly. projects, so it's it's, not... it's it's plausible now. But what we know about where Aquaman's heading with Mira taking the throne, if if that's going to be the main focus, mm. uh, split with Arthur doing, you know, Justice League shenanigans, I think she can make it work. Yeah, I, I mean, think it's me- worth noting Abnett's stuff with Wrath will be coming to a head around yeah. July. Yeah, it will be, yeah, yeah. There's right, right around then. And I think, yeah, I mean, not that I necessarily subscribe to the idea that you have to have like a male rate a male, a female rate a female, but if, if, there is, oh. if there is like a temptation there, like she would love to do a Mira, like uh, oh. ongoing essentially. Well, I just, I just feel like she's drawn to these powerful, like she, she reinvigorated Captain Marvel. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like she's drawn to these characters that kind of are broken. Not that Mara's completely broken. But she's like, well, no one expects me to do these cool things yeah, with them. I think I it's less that because Mira's not broken. Mira's just never been yeah. a star. Yeah. She's always just been kind of what you know. She, she's the mm-hmm. one with Aquaman. I feel like this would maybe be a chance to actually elevate her into at least you know a B exactly. lister from whatever she is now. Yeah. You know, C lister right now. I did just check as well. The uh, July that is the conclusion to the Wrath saga. Interesting. So again, it lines up in the same way that you know that they were talking about the Green Lantern. It, 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 okay, it, sure, it lines up there. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I don't. I don't know if Suicide Squad has a end of an arc in that month. That's because we've not been paying attention to it. Yeah. <laughs> so who knows? <laughs> but it's, it's it's just switching to single shipping around now. So uh, I don't know if that mean, means means yeah. it's, it's gearing up to end its current run or whatever. Um, but it's an interesting thing, and I'd be definitely curious to see. It. It, it, what I like about that one is that it's a completely random name who has got credit behind her. She's a good writer from, from you know mm-hmm. various projects. She's got good reputation, uh, but I would never have put her with Aquaman. And I think obviously it being this dual book where Mira's the queen of Atlantis, and then Arthur's maybe more like like I don't know her enforcer or her like you know soldier and yeah. and the and the trades and whatever. Well, he, yeah, because because he's part of the Justice League. Is he not part of Snyder's League? I can't remember. He is, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. So if, if he can't be king because of, you know, whatever, he doesn't like it, as we, as we found out in... I still think he'll be in his own book, though. I don't think he's he's going to be missing No, it. but that's what I'm saying. That frees him up from not having to be king, and he can go on these Justice League adventures, too. Hmm. You know, like... Yeah, it's never stopped him before. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, oh, he's in just, like, just now. Yeah, he's still in the main book all the time. But that's what Abnett uses the jumping off point for him, you know, getting thrown out from being king. That's what allowed Wrath to. Oh, sure, yeah. You know, uh, okay, so I'm, just, I'm looking at in storyline continuity. Oh, sure. Like, uh, uh, you know, festival. Is it maybe it's made it sound to me like, oh, that, what you were saying, there was Ackman's going to leave and just be in the Justice League and no, not be in no, his no. main book. Yeah, no. Uh, but he can come and go, and he doesn't yeah. have to be the focus all the time. Of the Aquaman book, you know, and like I, you said, I, actually, I think like, we'll, I like that idea of him being the enforcer, kind of. Yeah, and I think what will maybe be the, the, the emotional exploration of it is the idea of Mira being in power. How does Arthur deal with that? Does it cause a strain in the relationship because of this different power dynamic between them, and so on? You know, not not that I necessarily see Aquaman as being all machismo and be like, oh, women's my boss, ah, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I don't well, necessarily like, see it being well, that I, simple, but like, does it? Well, her not listening to him on yeah. something, he really knows, and he's like, well. I was king once. Yeah, um, I and you got thrown out because you were shit at it. So. Deposed exactly. is the word you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> you were shit king. Long live the some, queen. By some hoodlum. <laughs> I love what's going on in Aquaman. Uh, so more, more that, on that later. More on that later. Yeah. We got we had an issue of Aquaman this week, of course. And then the, the fourth one that was, came up was David Walker, who was the writer of uh, Cyborg back at the start of Rebirth. Um, mm-hmm. Which well, it was 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 solid enough written. I think honestly, I just don't, I think we dropped that because I think there's no, almost nothing you can do to make Cyborg interesting. <laughs> but, I think it was overly dense. Uh, yeah. When, when I when we, I, I recall yeah. thinking that. But even but... even Johns couldn't do it to Cyborg. He couldn't make Cyborg exciting enough. No, to... but to to be fair with Johns, and I'm gonna stick up for my with my guy here. Uh, those issues of his Justice League that were focused on Cyborg, I really enjoyed. So sure, an issue was, here, an issue there, but not an ongoing well, no, book. It was, arc. it was it was him being rebooted after Grid took him off. You know. So, oh yeah, okay, I remember it. Yeah, that didn't rock my world. You know, I, it was fine. Well, I, I was like, wow, I actually care about Cyborg now. So, um, know. but. Uh, so I'm just saying that just to preface where where we might know him from. But hey, so the rumor is is that he's going to be on a new Flash book, not not replacing the current book, a second Flash right. title. That was the exact wording, a second Flash title. It's about freaking time. Well, of course, everyone's dream is instantly going to be oh, it's Wally West. Wally West has got a solo book. I don't know if that's no. necessarily the case. Um, I I think Flash it's family. It's plausible given that you know 51, which is the the last issue yeah. in July, is an epilogue to Flash War. That's true. It could be spreading him out. I, honestly, my my kind of hope and almost um, I think more likelihood is a flash. Fan, yeah, Wally leading a team of other speedsters away yeah. from Barry, uh, Avery. Mm-hmm. I mean, do, I mean, I don't want to get too hopeful for Flash War here, but given that they're actually going to bring, he's going to like find out about his kids, right? That's something that we've known that he's mm-hmm. going to find out during Flash War. Do we dare somehow get them back by the end of Flash War? Does he have you know little Irish too and whatnot? Like, do we have them back? For him to like lead them, I don't know. What was Maybe. his son's name? It was something weird. I can't remember. <laughs> it's 
been a while. I don't remember. I, but I remember a little I, because Iris was the. They both had Speed Force powers, and then through Speed Force shenanigans, only Iris ended up with them. Yeah, because she became <sighs> like, she, she she became the new impulse uh, for her brief yeah. time existing. Yeah. Uh, that said, where is where is Bart? Uh, yeah, Bart. I don't think we're gonna get to Bart immediately. I think Bart's something he'll, he'll do. Uh, when I say him, I mean Williamson. I think it's something he'll get to. But he's, he's shown that he's taking time to get to the Wally stuff and exploring that. So I think yeah. he'll give that the, the time it deserves later on. I think. Let, let me say again, it's it's just plausible enough. The timing it lines up. Like okay, that's that. If if you were gonna spin off. August when it would happen. Yeah, here, here's here's the thing. Like, I mean, we, we don't know that Abnet's even going to be leaving Aquaman. Uh, so the timing works out for the end of the story arc. But I think with uh, the Flash book, that's just after Flash War. If there's going to be something spin out of that, that's the perfect time. We right. know that Vendetti's leaving Green Lantern uh, core, so it needs someone Again, new on it. Right. It's okay. These things, they just sound like they make sense even though like you know some of them are maybe a bit of a stretch with the you know morrison on green yeah. where you know it's, it's a bit fan casty but it's plausible and just one last tease uh just to add on to the sort of rumors uh chris wild goose who of course was the artist on batgirl for a while uh mm-hmm. was teasing on twitter where he was posting images of a character uh seemingly a female character holding a spray paint can had a hood had like a sort of scarf over her face um and was just sort of teasing this is images from a dc book that's been not not been announced yet so <laughs> Science stuff. Uh, fan of his work. Yeah, yeah, I like his stuff in Batgirl. So that is cool. You met him though, Connor, right? Like, yeah, yeah. He, he he's a uh, local around, around me. He a bit goes to a con all the time. Hmm. Nice. Uh, so I was actually looking at that list for the rumors. I was like, could it be any of those? <laughs> yeah. And nothing directly. There's not. I mean, it's definitely not a character we know from any of those. You know, those properties, but I mean, it could be like a main or new character that we don't know yet. That's you know, mm. that you know that the, the the new Flash family book runs into because she's spray painting over Keystone or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, could uh, be. But who knows? So Chris, Chris Williams is on a DC book of some kind, but at the very least, we know we're getting announcements at some point, probably more before the next solicits. So yeah, it's just, just nice to know they've kept him in the family, un- unlike a uh, another one that we were a big fan of. <sighs> For I is an old man Logan. I hate it so much. Keep him DC. Don't let him go. I know. Welcome to get, get, get him an exclusive con- uh, contract. Is, who's, yeah. who's writing Old Man Logan, do we know? Uh, someone. I don't know who's writing that, but for I doing the heart. Oh, thanks, Connor, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> it's someone. A human being. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's someone I don't care about, clearly. I, I can find out if you want. <laughs> Go ahead real quick, because yeah. I want to know who Faraya turned on us for. Yes. Yeah. How, how, how many Marvel books can we talk about in our 100th episode of our DC podcast? Go on. Hey! Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ed, Ed Brisson. Oh uh, yeah, nope. Not even Soul. Like I'm not. I'm not familiar with Brisson. Nothing against Brisson. If Brisson ever gets all of this, it's not, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, we're, we're bitter. That's all. Yeah, we're just I mean, it's like when Sorrentino left to go with Lemire to over there, and then end up working with Bendis. Like I get that. You know. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. How, how about we get Sorrentino back? Have some Sorrentino on like terrifics. Get, get, you know. Yeah. I'd read the hell out of that. I mean, that that said, he's doing Gideon Falls anyway, yeah. so I'm I mean, fine. Yeah, let yeah. like, you know, I read the hell out of Terrifics anyway. <laughs> it's true, but I'd, 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 do you know what? I'd be annoyed because I'm like, right, well, I'm only going to get three issues of it anyway. <laughs> no, what they need to start doing now, please, Connor, is when they sign on for a book is to like have like a certain number of issues on the contract. Oh no, no they've signed on for thirty issues. They're going to do thirty issues before they leave. Yeah, yeah I'm down for that. Uh, so that's, that was the news. That, that was all the stuff. Unless you guys had any other little t- uh, Twitter tidbits yeah. or things. Oh, Matt's got something. Yeah, so this, this, one's, this one's small and probably only matters to me. But uh, they they announced that Spielberg is in talk uh, to do a Black Hawks movie. Oh, right, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of wasn't even thinking of the movie stuff. <laughs> but yeah, well, sure. No, that was just yeah. that, that was my big news. Just yeah. the idea of that. I have no idea what it would entail. I don't know if they'd go to Dinosaur Island. But, I'd, I'd hope so. I, I would hope they would go with the pulpy yeah. silliness stuff instead of just making it a war movie. Yeah, and that, yeah. that's that's what I want. So, yeah. uh, no, two two names I never would have thought go together. So, yeah, because yeah. uh, they also had the, they hired a, a director for the Birds of Prey movie, which a lot of sites were calling the Harley Quinn movie based on a Birds of Prey story, which really upset me because it's a disservice to their characters. Uh, yes, it is. But uh, hey ho. Yeah. Uh, I saw a couple of things on Twitter. Um, one was uh, Snyder talking about the art for uh, Justice League. 
with a uh, you know obviously oh, yeah. double shipping. Yeah. We we know the two artists. Uh, it's no, we know two from... of the three artists because we know oh, the third oh, that, one. That's true, but for the for the regular arcs, not counting you know whatever the the other issues are going to be. Uh, mm. Issues one and six will be uh, Jim Chung, and then two through five will be Jimenez. Yeah. Um... It's funny because uh, he says in the tweet that they're going to try and keep this kind of schedule for consistency. Although I wonder if what he means there, though, is that after the first arc, they'll they'll, they'll make sure they're scheduled so that they don't miss issues and get delayed. Because um, I'm, I'm I'm wondering if like this like it'd be kind of weird to have this whole first and last issue of each arc by the one artist like going forward. Like I can see it working for the first one, depending on what they're doing. Yeah, but I'm I'm curious if it then means that they'll switch after that to. Uh, you know, full arcs, or like, full arcs, I mean, like, maybe they'll do three and four issue arcs rather than six issue arcs, and they'll swap right. between them or whatever, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. They're both yeah. good artists, though, so, I mean... They're, they're, they're... They are, and, you know, it's, uh, I have no problem with either of them individually, but it's it's kind of a, a weird structure to be that, if that is the consistent structure. Maybe maybe there's some sort of, I don't know, plan in mind. Like, maybe, maybe yeah. issue six is, like, the, the first, like, issue of, like, the Legion of Doom stuff, so it is kind of separate. And then, mm. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, mm. But uh, Only other thing is, uh, um, Murphy was tweeting, you know, I think it was last week we were talking about how he part Oh, yeah, week. I want to laugh about this, actually, because yeah. last week he, he put out his big list of rules, his agenda, his promises. He's, he's like a politician putting out his manifesto. Yeah. He's like, yeah. hey, you know, a bunch of things, you know, there'll always be a cool vehicle, they'll you know, never connect it, and people will stay dead when they die. But the one we're going to focus on today is when he said, and there'll never be a delay. I'll always make sure things come out on time. And then... The next issue in the series that's already happening is delayed. Yes, so it'll be the fu- the final issue will be delayed by a week, and it's it's quite amusing because it's actually a, a scheduling error that got overlooked because he decided to make the the final issue oversized, which you know wasn't the original plan. Right. So at DC they went, okay, here if I have an extra week to get it finished, which doesn't seem that generous really for you know giving no. the amount that it t- is, but um, then. Turns out he got it finished on time anyway, but for, they forgot to inform you know the, the distributors and the printing stuff. Right. So it was like, well, it was too late to push it back forward. <laughs> so. It still makes me laugh, though. It still makes me laugh that immediately yes. the the very next thing out with his name on it was was delayed. Yeah. Even if yeah. it's a stupid reason, it's still funny. <laughs> so uh, that's why you don't make promises that are out with your control all the time. Yeah. No. He, he kind of said that. He's like, well, I guess I spoke too soon. You know, it seems there are still things in the publishing industry that are beyond even my control. <laughs> but hey ho, so that's, that's, that's the news of the week. Uh, so we'll get into the books, which is a nice big long list, actually. So uh, starting yeah. off with Batman 45, Tom King writing Tony S. Daniel on the art. This is his first issue of Batman. Uh, only in Rebirth, anyway. Of course, he actually wrote uh, some Batman back way back when, before. Uh, before the New 52, he was writing yeah. Batman for And then bit. he was doing Detective Comics. And then he, he, he swapped over to Detectives for the start of the New 52, and he was doing that for yeah. a while. Yeah. Um, but he is a much better artist than he is a writer. Uh, so it was... Uh, <sighs> Amen. Delightful. I say this all the time, but his art is fantastic. <laughs> delightful to have him back in an in a artwork capacity. And on top of that, this is, of course, the start of an arc uh, featuring Booster Gold, where he has went back in time and... Stopped, stopped the, the the Waynes from dying because this is what he wants to. And the birthday gift, because this is the thing. Beforehand, when they were sort of previewing this, and Tom King was talking about it on Twitter, I was like, okay. oh, he has a birthday gift for Batman. He's going to save his parents. Wedding and that's, gift. Oh, wedding gift. Sorry, yeah, wedding, wedding gift. gift. Right, yeah. Just brain fart, right? You got a wedding gift for Batman. He's going to like you know stop his parents from dying. I was like, okay, I guess that's it. But he doesn't. He's not supposed to alter history like that. That's weird. It turns out what the actual gift is is that he'd heard this whole, you know, the, the whole Superman story. Uh, you know, what do you get for the man who has well, everything? The man who has everything. He was little, thought yeah. there was a kid, yeah. and, and it made him think about, you know, Krypton not exploding. And then when when he comes out of it, he's much more thankful. Yeah, for so, it's, a, it's a Black Mercy story. It's Superman yeah. sees what would happen if he never became Superman in the, in the way that he did. And then when he came back out of it, he had an appreciation, almost like it's a wonderful life, he had an appreciation yeah. for all the good things, despite the fact that Krypton Exploding was a sad sad event. 
So, so Booster that, Gold. The moral of that story. Yeah. So Booster, of course, screws it up, which I love. So Booster has went back in time. He has stopped the winds from dying. Come back to present day, where we're in this completely alternate, you know, Gotham City. War zone. And he wants just Bruce Wayne to see all this and then take it away again. Because because even when he's explaining, he's like, "So I'm going to go back in time, and I'm going to well, I'm not going to quite kill your parents per se, but I'm going to let it happen." <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> to to a he, Bruce Wayne who, may I add, who well he says he's had flashes, like he's had dreams of maybe this alternate timeline. To him, yeah. his par- parents have never died. So just imagine hearing this from this wacky yeah. blue and gold time traveler that he's going to go back in time and take his oh, parents away. I love this. I love this so much. Uh-huh. That's not even this, the best part of the issue. The best part of the issue is uh, Skeet's uh, giving Booster shit answer. for everything. Yeah. So I'm I'm pretty sure this is a younger Booster Gold, right? Yes. Because it has sure, to be, yeah. you know, because obviously we just saw Booster in, in action and he's, yeah. he's, he matured a bit, right? And, you know, he was like, okay, let's mm-hmm. take this seriously. This, you know, it, it combined with, like, the fart jokes, it feels, like, pretty young. And then I think... That, we, no, we had that's a cover sad, with... though. That, that, is, that is still who Booster is. Like, this is way he's, reckless, right? Yeah, he, yeah, but he's even more oh. juvenile than usual here. Yeah, I, I don't mind. It's... No, no, I'm, I'm just. I feel like he might be a younger version because obviously we we saw one of the covers with a booster with a beard. Mm-hmm. So I assume that's like okay, that's the older version that comes back to fix all this shite. Right. Yeah, uh, very possibly. So, so you've got that 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 core concept. You've got the the banter a uh, highlight of which is when Booster like a child starts just repeating everything Skeet says. And one of the things that Skeet <laughs> does say is like, "Oh, Booster goes the kite man of the Justice League." I I died. I was. Oh, Tom King's oh, finest man. moment. Yeah. <laughs> this, was gold. this was gold. This was gold. Even even the start of the issue with uh, Hal Jordan killing himself because something that's happening mm-hmm. because there's like uh, not just one Joker. There's like Jokers, and uh, yeah. it seems to be like a thing like superheroes can become Jokerized, and yeah, that's what's happened to Hal Jordan. Maybe. Yeah, and he's killed himself yeah. with his Green Lantern ring. Uh, that's how we start this issue. That's that's the big dark moment that happens. Uh, and then on top of that, we get to see what all the four Robins are like in this world. Obviously, Dick Grayson is Batman, who goes around killing superheroes because it, he has to kill them before they become Jokers, because that's really right. dangerous. So he's doing that. Um, Jason Todd is a is a car salesman who sells... A rims. A rim salesman. Well, specifically, sure. But he sells tires that have self-defense, because, of course, the joke here is that he, he was introduced as stealing the oh. tires off the Batmobile. But he sells tires. He's like, hey, guys. He's got, like, a Better Call Saul style commercial. He's like, hey, oh. you know, do you, do you ever leave your car somewhere in Gotham City and then a joker comes up and tries to steal your tires? Well, now your, your, uh, your Todd Tire Taser will kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Todd Tire Tase. That's patented. <laughs> you got that. Then he tries to steal it. He gets Todd Tire Tased. Yeah, um, and you, you got Tim who's working at a company, and that's how we find out about how. Wayne. Sorry, yeah, at the Wayne Corp. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he like, he tells a story about how he's on the bus and there's a Joker, but everyone on the bus like went to pull out their guns to shoot him first. So that's how dark things in Gotham is. Everyone. Uh, yeah, and, and they shot the other person as well because yeah. just you know they in and the confusion. The but I think but I think that was, was an accident. That was the line. But yeah, I think that was an accident. Yeah. 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 So this is dark. There's President Cobblepot, who who <laughs> sounds very familiar in some of the, the boasting. Well, I think, uh, it was, was it Mayor Cobblepot or President Cobblepot? No, it was President Cobblepot. Was it President? President. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you've got uh, uh, Ghoul ruling uh, Eurasia. Eurasia. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and because one of the things they mentioned as well, because you, you're getting all these like, one pages of the robbers. You even get one for Duke. Duke's just kind of brain dead. He's been jokerized. Yep. yep. And... I was thinking, oh, how are we going to get Damien? Because obviously he's not met Talia. So we actually get Talia with Raz, and it's the whole scene is just about Talia saying, no, there's, there's no air, because there's no man who's worthy yeah. of me. Because, you know, Bruce never became Batman. He was never a detective. Never Batman. So, yeah. and, uh, so, no. Full of wacky big ideas and concepts, this issue. Oh. Oh. And just the uh, yeah, the banter between Booster and Skeets is at peak. Oh, like, it's the highlight for me. Like as, as good it's as everything so else is, good. that is the the, uh, the thing I love the and, most. And this, and I, I mentioned this in, in in the comic thread. It's a little bit self parody that my favorite issues of Batman have been ones that are focused around other people than Batman. You know, so hmm. like the Kite Man issues, and then the the double date with Superman and Lois, yeah, and yeah. now Booster, like. But it's because they're unconventional stories. Yeah, no, I'll okay. I'll defend you on this one because this is yeah the best issue in in a while for me by far. Um, 
Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not down it. most of the last. I mean, I, the Ivy arc was a little bit weaker, sure, but um, I like I like the wedding dress issue quite a bit actually. So yeah, yeah. I wanted to be on that one. Uh, like, this is here, you know. What I said, you know, I think I said like it's just like Tom King is great for me when he's got like some sort of plot to back up his Batman run, and you know, mm-hmm. all the banter here is still what I expect from King, but there's there's a plot to back it up. Yeah. So it was well, because going through this, and I'm like, what is going on? Is he in the future? Is this uh, some twisted thing that he has to stop from happening? Because He's the greatest hero you've no, ever heard of. He he did that. He caused that. Right. <laughs> right. Well, so, you know, I don't stay up to date with the solicits like you guys do. Because I like to be surprised. Yeah. So when I get to that reveal that this is what he did, I started laughing maniacally. And my I, wife looks at me and goes... Well, I, I mean, I laughed anyway just because of the way he was telling it. It was that full page where it's just uh, all, it's all his face just explaining and he's trying to justify what he's done. Oh, so that's Black Mercy thing with Superman. So I thought I'd show you a world without you being Batman and then you'd love your life because you'd see how much better it is than this nightmare. Yeah. That's his logic. Uh, uh, like I said, I, I skimmed the solicits, but by the time it comes to it, it's three months later, yeah. I did not remember at all that Booster had caused yeah. this if that was in the solicits. Oh, I, I remembered that. I remembered that from the solicits. I didn't remember... Or know anything else, but I knew Booster caused whatever was happening. Also, they go to the bat signal and it's broken, right? And he goes, "Oh, that's a great sign." So Skeets helps makes the bat symbol. Yeah. Uh, symbol. That you, that you, one. You've all overlooked cool. the best page. It's where the the it's where you know Booster and Skeets they're searching for Batman. This week and he's ha- hanging, talking in the alley, and yeah. the noose just comes down and grabs yeah, him. And Skeets is like, "You know, I think he's right above us." Which I see yeah. you've already discovered. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the way Skeets turns around. It's just the sequential art's really good because Skeets turns around and looks up. It's really comical because of the actions. And then, <laughs> just to complement the art again, uh, that page I was mentioning where Bruce was explaining to Bruce Wayne his entire ridiculous plan. Yeah. Everything yeah. about it, the art, all the expressions of him trying to explain this. Yeah. His motions, his, his yeah. pace, everything. Yeah. Is, it's, it's perfect sequential art. It's great. It did remind me of Mr. Miracle. You know? Uh, like, with, with the nine panel grid and how he tells the story through that way. Like, you know, for as good as Gerard's is, King also knows how to structure that in the script. So, and it, and it yeah. helps that Daniels hmm. nailed the expressions, especially Booster. Because Bumbling and Booster is probably my favorite Booster. Like, I like him as the secret hero and whatnot. But him just trying, it's, it's relatable. Him trying to do something nice and just screwing it all up. And I like, though, this a, is one where almost every other character in the DCU, including Skeets, is like, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> don't do yeah. this booster don't do it terrible uh, yeah oh uh, and then also uh you find out that that Roz and talia are responsible for the joker in this timeline because joker's destabilizing the u.s you know with, with this joker's thing yeah. which i thought that was pretty cool that was a nice nah. you know, uh, in, a, in a world where batman didn't help create joker it'd be the goals that did it you know? Yeah, I'm assuming this goes up to 49 because obviously 50 is the wedding issue itself. So I'm assuming yeah. this is a five, maybe four issue. I can see them maybe being like a standalone before we get to yeah. the wedding. But uh, that seems like a very fun plot to sort of like go through before we get oh, to that. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, it's exciting. It's fun. It's fresh. We, and it's one of these things where you know it's all going to be fixed, right? So you, you're not. But and sometimes that can be a problem because it feels like why are we doing this? But because it's all about how much Booster screwed up and the the fun of it. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If anything, it, it works well, is, better because we know it's going to be fixed. Yeah, this is Back to the Future, but if we're following Biff <laughs> as he's changing things at the Almanac, Connor doesn't get that because he hasn't seen it. But um, <laughs> you know, I still get the references. There you go. But Power of Love it, is it, a beautiful and thing, and that's fine because a lot of people get down on Back to the Future too. But I like what it does with the different, you know, with the parallel nature of. You know, this is why this happened, and this was going on at the same time, and and whatnot. So I'm perfectly okay with that. Plus, I'm a booster mark, so it makes one man sing, <sighs> makes another man weep. Yeah, there you go. So, so something that is, I thought, interesting about this issue is there uh-huh. is no no Selena at all. No, as, as I, much I, as we're I, seeing all the Robins, we're seeing everyone else. I think that's very intentional. I think we're going to that will probably be an end of issue reveal. Is like this is Selena in this world. What's happened to her? But make sure if she's alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because so, uh, I mean, th- there's still a wedding happening. It's you know the, the, the Waynes. Yeah, I think they'll probably reveal he's, he's, he's marrying someone else, or he's married someone else. Well, so so this is my take on it: is this isn't where we're gonna get the evolution of Batman? Because as of right now, King's King's stuff uh, story has been focused on 
why Batman, Batman, right? And it's, you know, to make sure what happened to him didn't happen to anybody else, right? And I feel like through this story right here with Booster, it's going to be like Selena now is that reason. Because in a world where he has his parents, he doesn't have Selena, mm. right? So it's he can't have both. Yeah, and we should talk about how it ends chat. because Bruce, upon kind of believing him because like, he's having these flashes, he decide, he actually destroys Skeets and he's like, I'm getting back to this uh, party because I wouldn't miss this for the world for my beautiful mother. And he's like, no, he's making the choice. He doesn't want to go back to whatever this other life yeah. was. Yeah. So, he goes, Alfred yeah. will show you the way out. Yeah, it was, it was obviously this here, the way Bruce reacts, is it's very much similar to this uh, episode of Doctor Who. Uh, I don't know if you, you remember, it was uh, like season three. It was a tenant. He he turns himself human, and he you know forgets all his stuff. He doesn't and he want to go back. Creates this whole life, yeah. And he's told about it. He's like, you know what? I, I've had these flashes. I believe you, but I don't want to lose this. Right. It makes sense, oh, Matt. Your, your your mic's mic's going. Going. Yeah, uh, and it makes sense that a Bruce Wayne who didn't lose his parents and didn't become Batman doesn't want to go. To he that can't life. understand. He can't fathom yeah. what it's like to to go through that. Because well, why yeah. would he? Exactly. This is how he should have reacted. He shouldn't be like, yes, I believe the time traveling man and like, yeah, it's like, sure, alive. go on then, go kill my parents. Let's ru- yeah. let's ruin my world. So you know, uh, uh, it's exciting. Uh, be fun sort of having this antagonistic Bruce uh, boost to try to solve all this out what other heroes might we see in this world and how they've been, how they've been affected um, I want to know where Superman's at I, I wonder if I mean we, we have President Cobblepot so the world is kind of jacked up mm-hmm. but how how would no Batman affect Superman uh, Superman died because Batman wasn't there to save him that one time when they just like, were fighting something I'm not even just saying that as a thing. I'm saying that without Batman, Superman also doesn't flourish. Like they need each other, kind of no, thing. No, I, I feel like we get almost Dark Knight Returns, where he's kind of not a puppet of the government, but he's, you know, he just he does what's right I mean, and what's right. Is, was was just... he Jokerized at some point? Yeah, yeah. See, I don't think I don't think he would have been like that's. Oh, you no, hope you hope. That. Yeah, you hope he wouldn't wouldn't have been. He's he's an alien though. It's not it's not the same. Like Hal's still a human. You know what well, I mean? It works for the story, is the point. Yeah, but, yeah the, the big point is, is we're going to see how everyone else is affected by Bruce never being a part of their life. You know? um, and how did Dick end up being in a bat suit without there being a Batman first? That's with, an interesting with, story. Uh, you know, armed to the teeth like the Punisher, too. Yeah, I yeah. Um, I, I, I do like the idea that he's a, he, he didn't deal with his own loss better because Bruce wasn't there to like, help him, so he went right. down a darker path. That makes sense to me, but how did he pick the bat suit if you know there was no right. Batman before him? Oh, that's true. So, right. yeah, it's curious questions, and I think uh, it's a fun thing to explore, and uh, the art's great. It's a great issue. Yeah, this is very much his, you know, Batman 666. Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. That's King doing his his own version of or, that. Or uh, Days of Future Bats, perhaps, as well, a little bit, if you want to <laughs> we'll go down yeah. that, that path. Uh, so, no, Batman 45 uh, on top form, very good. Uh, that'll take us on to Superman 45, which is the final issue of the run from Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason, who are the, you know, uh, Gleason does the art in this, as well as co-writing with Tomasi. And uh, we do have the special coming, though, uh, next yeah. month. There is a, still a special that's going to wrap up the run as well, even though this is a very finale-esque run mm-hmm. and it's in all the stuff as well it calls back to a lot of things early on in fact what, probably my biggest kind of bittersweet complaint about the whole thing is that it was kind of reminded me yeah this was all better in the first like third of it when you were doing all this stuff wait when you were in hamilton it, it, here's it is 100 percent of the time they're in hamilton it's good almost 100 percent. i had one or two little That's nitpicks it. with this one yeah. Uh, just just for some of the dialogue, I, I felt like they went almost too sentimental in a couple of places. Yeah. There, there was one scene where John just randomly said to Clark, "I love you," and he's, like, "I love you too, son." And it felt like it didn't build up to it. It was just like random in the middle of a page. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. Uh, but still, they're not reading plaques off of a thing. Oh, absolutely. So. Yeah. Like yeah. you know, the minor complaint because ultimately this was them saying goodbye to the other house where they you know raised John and. Uh. Lois crying as she's mopping the floor, and that was kind of sweet. And her, her taking her, the mailbox, the mailbox yeah. bit, that yeah. was like my, my favorite. Yeah, Clark's like, that's crying? illegal. That's illegal, honey. It's like, yeah. so. <laughs> don't care. And you got flash showed. I was like, isn't that illegal? Yeah. yeah. Uh, poor, poor Barry. He's like, yeah. Well, let's use Barry to move move everything because he's super speed. That's fine. Well, yeah, and Lois just like, this. yeah, yeah. Go on, bathroom, living room, kitchen. Yeah. Uh, we we found out now too that that it's three hundred miles from Metropolis, so they they've been they were quite a bit away uh, in in Hamilton County, uh, yeah, which, yeah. which they gave it some sense of geography at least for me. Um, 
with Flash going to yeah. Miles. I do wonder uh, though, is, is this the last of Kathy? Because we've got. I don't know, think so. I, I think Tomasi is is hinting what? with him and Maya. Okay, sure. Yeah, I, I could see it. I, 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 I can I could see a Tomasi Young Justice book with this team and, uh, of kids. Yeah. yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Uh, definitely, I think it's still probably the last of Cathy we'll see in Superman itself, though. I think. I, oh, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Bendis could use her, but I, I, I just don't feel that it's happening. Here's I the don't... thing: when we get that inevitable book from from Tomasi, yeah. we can have Rob Zaro in it as well. Yes. Oh, who's fantastic! Yeah, as much as we've had some mixed feelings on the 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 the, the boy Zaro arc. Yeah, uh, Rob, Rob Zaro trying to like hit on everyone, even Lois, who's like, "Oh, I've been warned about you, Rob Zaro." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it's quality stuff. Well, uh, I forgot that I he came or didn't know that he went with. Yeah, he joined. Said the Bizarro one. boys are, are being taken care of by Kathy and and Maya. I was like, what? Who else so, went? Oh, yeah. So, so what? What is this potential book then? Is it Robin, right. Superboy, Rob Zaro, uh, Boy Zaro? That's actually really confusing to say because it's like, why is it not Super Zaro? Just to make it easy between the two of them, but whatever. Uh, Super and, then, Zaro. and then Kathy and, and uh, what's her face? Nobody. Oh, Maya. Nobody. Yeah. Maya. yeah. So uh, I, I wish Super Sons wasn't ending so that we could get the the Bizarro pairing well, just for one issue. I think we but might get it in this new book if yeah. that's where we're going. Yeah. yeah. Given that Tomasi said that it's not he's not done with the the kids. Like, yeah. I think that's maybe the, the logical thing to assume at this point. Uh, that's it. I still expect him on something else, though. I don't think it'll just be that. Unless he's doing some uh, non-DC No, that very much or... feels like a side book, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah, even a mini. I'm fine with just a mini, even. You know, oh, sure. Yeah. Like... I'd love an ongoing, because honestly, I, I think uh, Super Sons has been up and down. I think Super Super Sons has been a lot more consistent. I meant Superman there. I think I said Super Sons twice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, Super Sons has been the more consistent of the two, I think. Um, but... Now, this was a nice send off. I had a, had a lot of, uh, maybe, maybe just a touch too much of the, the Clark sentimentality as he's talking to John. That went on for quite a while, but uh, outside of that, I have a lot to complain I love that about. layout, though, of them walking around mm-hmm. the tree and in the field. Because they, you know, just... they reminisce about you know, the cat, they reminisce about uh, various things that have happened in the book. We see the cow that uh, Manchester Black became. We see the couple who are now getting engaged, who I think they were just like asking each other out when we f- yeah. were first at the fair back so in the issue yeah, yeah I, so uh, they, which, they new... I mean i guess that tells us it's been a year right yeah uh, about I, i'm assuming this is annual. a yearly fair yeah. yeah well and also we had that big creature that attacked as well and they kind of made a ride at the fair around that squid yeah you know so that that was pretty fun we, like, got, we just... got a statue mm-hmm. yeah C- uh kathy making fun of it telling john to get an ego oh. yeah yeah. Uh, so it's a nice send off. It feels like the, the the arc's complete, and it had its ups and downs. But it, it would have felt much better a year ago. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um, it, it would have felt much better a year ago, and I, I think we. I think it says something that this book was typically better when it wasn't doing the action stuff. It was better when it was just dealing with the family stuff. And I think this, this issue just shows that. that. This is when it was at its best. This is when it's just dealing with the the mother, father, son, and you know, Kathy, the girlfriend, and um. But as I said, I'm all for more of the kids. I'm all for uh, Rob Zaro. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. There's that, you turn the page where he goes up, up, and then it's that double page and away yeah. of yeah. John Superman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because obviously there's trouble in Metropolis or wherever the league yeah. needs them, so you get the big double page rather than both opening their shirts. And then the last page is just the them sleeping on the couch with the TV and Lois yep. just stashing her mailbox. Oh, I'll wait until the goody two shoe. So well, we I'll, I'll take the mailbox. Uh-huh. Yeah, pretty much. So no, uh, so no, it, it, it was solid. It was good. It was definitely the most I've enjoyed reading the issue of Superman in a while. Yeah, it's kind of sad, isn't it? That's, that's the sad part of it. Yeah, that's why it's kind of bittersweet. So yeah. So, See, yeah. usually when you get an ending issue like this, it's bittersweet because oh, it's ending and it's good. Whereas here, it's like, well, no, it's good, but it hasn't been for so long. It, it feels merciful. Yeah. Yeah. We will move on, however, to Justice League number 43. Uh, this is the final issue, actually, of this, this run. Not only of Priest, but also just this numbering. This is the final of this this set, of, this volume yeah. of Justice League. To, to be this, back this in a couple of months. Yeah, because we went to issue one uh, in June. But uh, So this is Christopher Priest and Pete Woods. This is the final of uh, his run. Uh, wraps up the fans. Well, the fan kind of got wrapped up last issue, but it's kind of the fallout of the wrap up of that. Uh, um, Un- unceremoniously, yeah, uh, and for sure. Dealing with a few other things, um, 
And I have to... It says the thing, right? So I want to talk about two of the Fallout things, right? First. The, the two Green Larns, right? So Simon's is really funny. That's because the whole yeah. thing is being worried about this lunch with Superman. And we see him at the... And again, it's this like POV. It's almost like from Clark's point mm-hmm. of view. Seeing him like be all worried. He's like, ah. Oh. And he thinks he's getting fired from the Justice League. So he's just sort of like yelling at him and angry. And he sort of leaves off in a, in a, a, you know, a tiff. And Clark's just sitting there going, huh? And the waitress is like, is he okay? He's like, I'll have the, I'll have the fish, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's just it's, it's a good little joke. It, it pays off the, the running joke we've had with Simon. Uh, with him, his, him not being sure what this lunch with Superman was, uh, and we see that Clark's just there on his glass. He's all innocent. That's just you know he has, he genuinely just wanted to have lunch with him. Yeah, that's all it was. Uh, I just love how he went into like uh, as per the labor unions, you can't fire me without <laughs> just cause. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's we have an implied contract. Yeah. yeah. And then the Jessica stuff, this is the thing. I think the Jessica scene here that wraps up the kiss stuff is actually funny on its own. I actually like this scene a lot. However, it actually just makes the kiss itself with Batman annoy me way more because there was never an explanation or reason for it. She just kissed him. And it felt... Because I actually went back and read that scene from the issue. I was like, after I read this, I thought, oh, this is really funny because she goes to the the man she's like, hey, I want to apologise. I think we should agree that, you know, this was a mistake. You're the fiancé. And to to, to, to its credit, because we were saying, what what about, is is he forgetting Selena? And sure enough, Selena opens the door and she's like, oh, hey, I'm the fiancé. And she's like, I kissed him. It's like, I know. Uh, Do you want to come in? The Real Housewives is on. Let's go watch. That's funny. I'm sorry. What for? I love balloons. Yeah, it's funny that Selena doesn't give a shit, right? That is generally yeah. quite funny. But I I went back and read the scene where she kissed him, and it still feels super awkward and out of character. It still does. I don't understand what it, like, it doesn't make any sense for Jessica specifically. The, yeah. the, the real, you know, she's afraid of everything, you know, interaction. Yeah, I think this would no. work, this would work for almost any other character. Yeah. Almost any other, you know, it's, it's a moment of weakness, it's a moment of whatever... But in that scene, it felt weird because we were because we were convinced she was like being mind controlled, that it was it wasn't actually her. It was so out of character, and it never yeah. felt right, and it still doesn't. So, uh, hey ho, we'll just forget about it. Yeah, you know, she had a thing for for Barry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we could just forget about it now. But hey, that was funny. I I did like that Jessica was kind of prominent in this issue. That she starts and ends it. She has the bookend where in, she's in the Hall of Justice, presumably. Uh, at yeah. the new table, and she's like cracking jokes at the start. I liked all that stuff where she's like, "Ah, yes, uh, Ch- Chairman Cruz presiding. Yes, uh, okay, <laughs> fifteen minute grace window. Then I start firing people. All that stuff was just kind of amusing. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. well, and I like the that when Vixen shows up and she's like, "Well, I guess it's just not the end for our team either." You mm. know, like. And I, yeah, yeah, but I like the whole idea because it obviously it teases the new Justice League team at the end with Martian Manhunter and all that. Yeah. They show up and like, hey, Jessica Cruz, something's happened. We need your help at your game. And I do like that it's kind of the newest person. I mean, obviously Baz is still pretty new as well, but she's the newest. She's even newer than he is, you yeah. know, arguably. Uh, yeah. And I I like that that she's the one who's like, uh, do, do I do I come? Yeah, of course I do. And she steps yeah. in, and that's how we because it ends with this kind of Ooh. upbeat, hopeful look forward to the new Justice League stuff. So I like that too as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the actual resolution to the Deathstroke stuff in Africa, eh, whatever. I can basically just skip over all that and not care at well, this point. I, I understand where Priest is coming from because it's such a dodgy international relations thing. Yeah. And how he points out that the people that you're protecting were the ones that were wiping out the people before that it are just, now trying just to wipe happen them to out. land here. Yeah, yeah. Me, me and exactly. Pete had the whole debate on this and uh, the, the week the you debate, were away. The debate is interesting; it's worth having. But I feel yeah. like this had to be twice as long to actually explore it. Yeah, yeah. You do that in Deathstroke, where you have thirty issues to explore that, not six, because you know you you know because now that we know that Priest knew that this run was wasn't going to be long, like he shouldn't have put too much. He should have just had the fan yeah. have the fan be the the core thing for the the yeah. twelve issues, whatever it was. Um. I mean, I did, there's some fun moments that, and mixed in, like you know, Wonder Woman not being there for the plan, where they're all going to fake, you know, f- you know, pretend to yeah. be beat up by their stroke. So Wonder Woman comes in and starts beating the shit out of them. She's like, oh, yeah. someone didn't get the memo. So well, and I like symbolically, she's the one that has the lasso of truth, right? So yeah. like, mm. uh, you know, she she, like she doesn't lie about it essentially. Where no. everyone else is, you know, it's this this cheat. Yeah, yeah, because she, she's off getting healed by uh, Raven. Uh, mm-hmm. and she's in like her mind, and uh, Thanatos is you know try to corrupt well, her. That was pretty cool. I just. It was fine. It was fine. It just wasn't. Jazeki and that that whole thing and. I, I, I really love the ideas, but this uh, needs a good twenty issues 
dedicated then, to it. And yeah. the cyborg stuff, I'm still not sure on. Like, what was the point there? Like, yeah, take a pass like, on cyborg. Like he he tries to do the resolution with Batman, and Batman's like, "Oh yeah, I just wanted you to feel like what it was like to be leader." I was like, "Well, why?" Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's not like it's not like cyborg was spearheading the let's vote Batman out as leader. Oh, let's see how you do fair. You know what I mean? It was just a weird resolution. Like it, it, just... it, it played kind of weird to me as well. I, it was working to a point, but then it kind of ended in this kind of, mm-hmm. you know, I'm honestly, uh, yeah, I'm honestly when Cyborg punches him, and I was like, yeah. uh, okay, like, I'm actually sure kind of like, you know, what, what, what the point of this was directly. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I felt like, like we, had, we, we, we had two stories, and neither of them got a proper ending. Yeah, between the fan and how it started with how he was going around and. Yeah. They were trying to put limits on the Justice League. And... Because, yeah, because the, the, the interesting part of that in this issue is where Deathstroke turns around and says, admit it, you're actually relieved that I killed him because it solves the problem. Yeah. Like, that, that is the interesting part of that. That's the idea is, that I yeah. want explored. But it happened so quick and out of nowhere last issue that it doesn't yeah. feel like it properly built to it. Yeah. And it feels like I need another couple of issues at least to deal with just the ramifications oh. of that. Well, and yeah, because you look at Identity Crisis, and spoiler alert for people that haven't read Identity Crisis... But part of that is, what was Justice League going to do about Dr. Light and what he had done? And they had a vote, and then uh, Batman comes in halfway through the vote, sees what they're doing. It's like, well, no, you can't do this. Just just period. Yeah, yeah, that's and they crossing the line. Like him. Yeah. yeah, and so so Batman's affected, and then all of these heroes that had voted, like some of them were like, yeah, let's lobotomize him. The other one's like, no, we can't do that. And And why that broke up that version of the team. And it was really smart, you know, telling this, you know, kind of a reboot there. Uh, yeah. And and it, it plays the same sort of beats here where, you know, yeah. Batman and Superman have that talk about, you know, okay, what, what broke up the great bands, you know, like. Right. Yoko Ono. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and, uh, and he's like, no, 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 it's, it's all the way, you know, we, not being able to forgive each other, not being able to yeah. come together. And, you know, talking about, you know, the league is where we're supposed to have the common ground. I, I mm-hmm. like the tease of, like, this is the funny thing, though, is that no one's actually leaving the team. All the members are still going to be there for the new team. Yeah. As far as we know so far, anyway. I always like, too, that there's there's a main line of, of the Justice League and the two, who we see in that, that title at the time, so like with Snyder's. Mm-hmm. But there's also reserve members, so you can have the Jessicas and the... The Simons and the Vixens and and whatnot. Still, they're just not on the main line. I like the, I like the idea that Jessica is important enough that her and Cyborg may be leading the the Odyssey. Like that's you know it's like no, yeah. this is a sign of trust. And same with yeah. uh, Dark, where it'll be Wonder Woman and. You know. I saw some more of uh, Sejic's drawings of Jessica for that. Oh dear, yes. Oh my god, with the you know with all the weaponry and stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, this looks so good. Sejic drawing yeah. Jessica and Starfire. That it's like. He he got a hold of our podcast and was like, "Oh, this is who you guys like." Okay, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Now, nah, obviously, obviously, we're really curious about all that stuff. So it's exciting, leading you know, justice. Um, so I like to start and end. I like the tease for the next stuff. I just the resolution to the plots were a little bit too rushed and didn't have the time to explore it properly. So it's a shame because um, it started it started off pretty strong uh, back when Priest still yeah. started on the. Book. I really yeah. like that stuff and how you know because Batman wasn't getting enough sleep and he was. You know, burning the candle on both ends. And I wonder. Lead the team. I wonder if he knew it was going to be a short run, but he didn't know exactly how short it was going to be. Yeah. And he, was, he was told after the first like six issues, okay, it's going to be this many left. And he's like, oh, shit, I thought it was going to be twice as many as that. So he then had to truncate the yeah. rest of it down. And he was maybe just too stubborn with himself to actually just take things out. <laughs> so he. I think so. Yeah. Squished it all in. Because it because it, like... it, it felt perfectly paced for the first like six or seven issues, and then it was the back but half. Ultimately, it feels like this bastardized version of what could have been. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe he's just assuming that ah, you know if I ever do get a rate Justice League again, it'll be too long, so I'll just get this. Yeah, out now. maybe he's like he's never going to get another shot to tell this story, so yeah, might as well tell the the weaker version at least because mm-hmm. at least he's telling a version of it. But hey. Yeah. So that was Justice League. Uh, we'll move on then, speaking of Green Lanterns and Jessica, to Green Lanterns 45, Tim Seeley writing Ronin Cliquette on the art. And this is, you know, we're getting the full on flashback of, of Jessica uh, and her friends in the woods and what happened. And we mm-hmm. find out more about this. We find out they witnessed a body being disposed of by murderers who then, you oh. know, try to take out the witnesses. Uh, do you know what I liked about that side of it and, and the flashback stuff? Uh, whether it's actually a flashback or it's kind of like the flashback playing out inside, like, the, 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 the ring the black hole yeah yeah um is that 
it had like this weird horror movie feel to it. It reminded it me did. of like, a horror movie mm. where everything's fine because they're in the woods, they're on a camping trip for the first 20, 30 minutes of the movie, mm. but you know they're going to stumble across something really bad and it's going to all turn to horror. Like it gave yeah. me that feeling of that, you know. Yeah. Jason's going to show up and start hacking them with yeah. the machete. Because I especially like the panels where you see, like when it's a single, single out of Jane's actually explaining what she saw in the woods and we see those panels and it's the, the, the villains are just all in shadow with the smile yeah. it's really dark yeah, you, well, just, you just see the hints. eyes and the teeth yeah yeah and she hints she's like yeah i don't know if she actually doesn't remember what they look like or she's buried it so deep that not even i can see so she has to experience it for herself yeah, so she's having a three-course meal the justice league are all showing up because they're like hey there's a giant black hole above the city we have to deal with this uh, Jessica's sister's freaking out then Constantine shows up to try and help you know and Baz is the only one who can go in he has to go in without his ring that's uh, kind of what the plot's setting up so he, he's going in and he ends up going in and he's like wait this is the this is the power ring and it seems to be that the, the previous wielder of the power ring is trapped in there as well so uh, yeah. big big things I, I'm actually really into this story I'm, I'm glad we're really going in to uh, like her past and all that because it, it's been something of it's been part of her story for such a long time and it's nice to finally really be delving into it it is because this is what you know way back when when she was introduced in justice league by john so that was yeah. okay that was all that stuff there and that was you know quite a while ago now like years three three or four years yeah uh-huh. i'm not sure exactly when about in justice league it was more, more to the point it's you know 40 plus issues of this run of this this, this series yeah exactly yeah. yeah 45 here then plus all the other stuff we had with her before that yeah. So it's taking its time to get here. So it, and it I like that, big that, that Seeley's taking time to to talk about like her friends. Like we all get to know them. Like you know, her and her best friend have known each other since they were like six. Yes, and the then, sarcastic ginger as a uh, one of yeah, the points out. Right. Yes. And then and then her ex boyfriend is now dating her best friend, and how does that make her feel? And, it, and it's all of these different things. And I like the dynamics. And then I remember. You know, Pete mentioning it feels like a horror book. Well, that's, you know, Seeley, that's what he came up on. So yeah. like, right and every so often you just remember, oh, these are all dead, you know. Yeah. Because like, you kind of get caught up in it, even though the horror's there. Um, and then you go, oh, yeah, they're all dead. And you, you just, you're just waiting yeah. for it. Yeah, there's, there's, there's this feeling of dread, this feeling of counting down until doom. Um, mm-hmm. And that, that really works. And obviously the big reveal at the end, uh, Simon, you know, being the one who's closest to her, going in to try and get her out. Um because there's like a back door because of her closeness to him. Um, so, you know, it's, it's uh, I, I dug this issue a lot. I, I think it's nice they're treating this like a big deal, uh, really dealing yeah. with Jessica's past. And, uh, you know, I feel like given that we are setting up that she's going to be a, a big part of uh, Odyssey and No Justice yep. and all the rest of it, that this will have her coming out on the other side stronger for it, for going through this. Mm-hmm. So Definitely. Same. And uh, I still like Jane as a villain. I like her being like, oh, I'm feasting on her. I'm feasting on her pain, on her... Or, and even the fact that she corrupts the lasso of truth. Because uh, yeah. one of them was like, oh, we don't have time for this. She just puts the lasso on like, they start speaking. And it's fine at first, but then she starts to like corrupt what Wonder Woman's saying. And it's like, oh, yeah. she's... Well, really even, even Costigan's like, she's not what you think she is. Like, that's his kind of dire warrant. Like, yeah. you know. I, I think Celia's got a real nice handle on the League for, yep. for their dialogue. Mm. Uh, yeah. like, uh, they, they all felt really natural. Because uh, I, I don't think he, we've not seen him do a lot with the League. <laughs> Well, did, didn't he do the Steve Trevor issue? The, he did, that do, was, yeah. Yeah, that was on uh, yeah, Justice League vs. Suicide Squad. It wasn't a whole actual league in that issue, though. <laughs> no, but I mean, it just... It so, like I said, we've got hints miss. of what he can do with, with yeah. them, but you know, we, I think this is the first time I can really think of them all being around. Oh, I wonder if issues. he's a potential league run someday. You know, Obviously, a yeah, long maybe. time. Snyder's going to be there for a while now, but... I wonder if someday yeah. we'll get something from Celia in that set. Or some kind of team, you know. Like, our, it seems team dynamics. Yeah. Or, or well. even, um... Because even just the, the little way that Batman's like, oh, I'm going to have to interrogate her, and then it's, you know... Yeah. Like, Simon's like, hey, be careful, because like, she... Like, she, you know... The way she takes in words and manipulates them back at you is quite serious, even for you. Yeah. So... um. It's another, it's, I, I, I also like Constantine asking Superman to, to light a cigarette. <laughs> Just you know, small moment that just felt like you know, okay, it, I, it makes it feel like this natural conversation. Like, yeah, he's just the, kind of doing his own thing. Being the big wood boy scout, though, he should have told him no, or at least gave him a lecture. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I, ah, you know what? No, because he's like, no, I, I respect his choice. It's fine. He's, gonna, yeah. he's doing it anyway, so I might as well. <sighs> um, but yeah, no, it's all this shit. I'm, I'm glad that we're getting into Jessica's past, and uh, it seems it seems really well handled right now. Like I said, I really like the feeling of dread throughout it. So. 
Um, and that was solid. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, not yeah. nothing stand out, but pretty, yeah. pretty good. Mm-hmm. So, uh, moving on to Nightwing 43, uh, not another filling issue, so we were, I had no idea what to expect from this, much like last, the last one ended up being yeah. quite good, but this one we had no idea going to. Yeah. Uh, so this was uh, Michael Marecci and Mikhail Jung on this uh, issue. Yeah. And this is an issue, basically how Nightwing's trying to take a night off, he wants to watch mm-hmm. Netflix. But he feels guilty, because Bruce never takes a night off. Yeah, and he's like, I'm mm-hmm. not Bruce, I can take a night off. But yeah. both Robin, as in Damien, and Roy both call him asking for help, and they end up the things they're both involved in end up intersecting. Mm-hmm. They're actually kind of the same plot, uh, mm-hmm. so he ends up having to come out and save them and like help them fight. And uh, it's basically just I think the most fun stuff in this issue is definitely the Roy and Damien back and forth, yeah. and they're basically childlike hatred of each other. Mostly, yeah. I agree, but I feel like Roy's voice is completely off. Well, you're the one with the red dread hood, so. He's not even in Red oh, Hood. Oh, he's not even in Red Hood anymore. Yeah, Jeez. that was that was Fifty Two. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're I, I went to that. rush for that. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> uh, no, I read this one so fast. I just it wasn't doing it for me. Like uh, I, was I, I, I like you know you know Dick playing the father figure, especially with Damien. That's always fun. I don't think it was bad. I think I think it was great. It was just kind of a fine one and yeah. done. Not nothing special. Like, I, I guess I, I really don't think Roy is this juvenile anymore. No, that's fair. He hasn't been like this in a long time. So I, I do it, like when he plays off with Cheshire, though, just because of I know their history, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, but yeah, which that I, I, anytime, flight to still be intact because you know D- Damien yeah. calls her his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just don't haven't had a kid together yet, you know. Like there's no Leon, yeah. so oh, absolutely. I do like anytime Damien fights with somebody, I tend to enjoy it. But here, I I just. I get tired of it real quick. Yeah. Also, I'm really glad that at the end, Damien addressed that, you know, that you, you, Dick needs to learn what Netflix and chill means. Yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, okay, this this is weird. Well, he's just having to pick up their light work, right? Like, or his light work. As we have, yeah. he goes, we have, you know, Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but Dick next. keeps holding Netflix and chill. And that's kind of just strange because that's a very specific thing. That this is, is, is not. What I, I, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna stick up for Dick here because I, 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 I was hearing that phrase for a year before I actually knew what it meant. Really? I, I legitimately just thought it was, it meant just watching Netflix and relaxing. I had no idea it meant sex until, like, after a year of hearing it. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, I, I, maybe I was more in the loop on that one. For I'll, some I'll stick up for it. It wasn't until someone explained it in a TV show that I went, oh, it actually means something other than just what it sounds like. Okay. I mean, I got the subtext of it, but I just thought too, it's like. You can sit there and binge watch things, you know. Like, well, yeah, I, I wasn't sure if the writer just had no idea what it meant. I was like, okay, this is weird to be using that phrase. Just, it was almost like, oh, he's heard the phrase, and it's like, oh, I'll just use that. Oh no, so I, got, I, no, I got it was intentional from the start. It's just, funny. it's maybe funny that Dick doesn't know what it means, and then at the end, you know, even Damien's like, hey, you need to learn what this means. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I, I thought it was okay. It was fine. Like, I, I don't regret reading it. It was, it was a fine little story. It's fine. I wouldn't want any more. I'm good with just the one issue. Oh, that's, well, that's how you're getting, so it's fine. Oh, that's what I mean, like, <laughs> I'm glad it is just a, okay, this is just yeah. a one issue fill in. Um, that's just typically how I feel about fill ins like this, though. It, it just so happens that the last one ended up being fantastic. <laughs> like, that was that was yeah. more exception than the rule, I think, uh, yeah, when it comes yeah. to these things. But yeah. The bar was high. So, uh, so that was Nightwing. Uh, that takes us on to Mr. Miracle number eight, Tom King and Mitch Gerrards. This was meant to be last week, but he got pushed a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Of course, uh, Baby's Born, um, we, had the, we had that whole last issue, and this issue is basically about the juggling between the parents, because they can never be home at the same time, because they, yep. they keep having to fight this war. Uh, yeah, because he's so, the high father, yep. and they're, they're waging a war in Apocalypse, but she's the co-general, so yeah, I, I, I you could call this the joys of, of parenthood, because it, it's a timeline, the balancing work and, and the kid. Yeah. Did we know his name was Jack? That that happened in the last one, right? Uh, I think so. Can't remember. I can't okay. remember. But uh, I can't remember. Nice That's why. I, but but I like that that the kid's name is Jack. No, yeah, not only is he called Jack. At one point, someone calls him the King, which is a nice, yeah. uh, obviously reference uh, yeah. to Jack Kirby. Uh, yeah, and and, and we're getting an Excelsior in this issue as well. I think from the Stan Lee looking dude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, so fill, fill in the references uh, in this one. But this, this, as all issues with this, this was deeply sort of hard-hitting emotion, despite the fact that there's kind of an uplift, uplifting sort of bent yep. to it by the end, because it's all about the stress of being a parent and the stress of, you know, it, the, I'll have to look at it to be specific here, but there, there was like <laughs> scenes of him like on the battlefield and it's like, oh, this is the end. This Because I think early on he's, he's shouting, um, what was he shouting constantly during the battle? Uh, and it's but it's actually he's just really talking about uh, yeah, th- there's no escape there's no escape he, yep. he keeps shouting there's no escape but he's also I mean you can take that as a metaphor he's really just talking about parenthood yep. there's no escape from always having yep. this responsibility yeah that's it now it, yep. it, it, it's you're just saddled with that yeah so, so so I'm just gonna jump to it my favorite part of this issue is that Batman kills babies <laughs> like that line you're a parody of yourself at this point Matt <laughs> I know I could not help it though. You are a the parody. fact that they put that in, and you can't put, you know, you can't put stuffed animals in there with it. And he goes, hey, yeah, you can. It's fine. No, no, no. There's studies. Yeah, oh, he's so much. Cannot... Like, yeah, but there's, you know, cop death. You gotta, you gotta be careful. Yeah, exactly. And he goes, no, no, no. Study show. And then just the next lines are Batman kills babies, and I lost it. Like, it's... Oh, it's pretty fantastic. It's funny. I mean, that, that, that series has been very good at being funny, even when it's doing really dark yep. things. Um, yeah. You know, and it's funny because even the, the scene where he's, he's literally um, putting bodies, like he, they've built a big pit mm-hmm. for for the dead bodies that they're, they're yep. just getting rid mm-hmm. of. But as, as we're watching that, uh, it's it's contrasting because we're hearing that um, they're talking about oh, the, 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 you know, Jack trying to laugh. Uh, and talking about uh, the kid and him being a flirt and talking about all these nice things. It's this contrast between the, the two things. And one of the things that I love towards the end of the book is that he gets it the, the worst possible part of the book, his worst possible place where he's just, he's done, he's been fighting, he's beaten badly, he yeah. is completely miserable. Uh, and you know, ask when we get the dark side is, right? And yeah. he's actually he's actually singing the, the song again, you know, hey little baby, don't say a word, blah, uh-huh. blah, blah, blah. Um, and it says Dark Side is. We get the little video distortion effect before it says Dark Side is. Uh, he's at his possible worst, and that's when he gets the. I, mean, I don't know if he literally gets the call here, but at least in the book, this is where we get to hear him find out that he, the, the, the baby's saying Same. daddy or dada. Yeah. You know? uh, dada. And it's like that brings him back from I, the I think, edge. I think that is when he's getting the call because you get the Dark Side is. Yeah, and then the panel after that it clears up. There's no more video distortion. You hear the ping yeah. of the the message. Oh, you're right. There's a ping. Through. You're right. The ping. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was literally he's getting the call then or if it's just thematically. Yeah, this I think is... I think the ping is telling you it's now. So, but he, he gets this call, and obviously him singing the song. We get that at the, near the start of the issue. It bookends by him doing that again, and it's the idea that yeah, it's stressful. There is this responsibility. There is this thing, but it's also the thing that makes him sort of have hope again at the end because he's just, he's done. He's been on the battlefield, he's lying there, dark side is, it's covered in blood, it's miserable, but then he hears that his son, he hears his son say dada, and then it's like, everything's okay again, and you know, we have him singing the song again at the end to the kid. Yeah, um, and it's, it's probably like, I'm going to buy a, a goddamn diamond ring. He's like, he's, he's proper yeah. like pumped for doing it, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, we don't even see Barda until the end of the issue because the idea is that they never see each other. So it's given it's yeah. emulating that by us never yeah. seeing her. We hear the conversations, we hear the phone calls, mm-hmm. we hear them talking about oh maybe we should put a car seat in the the, the, the crib until he falls asleep because that's what's helping him sleep apparently. Yeah, yeah all, all these like parenting conversations um, as they're going back. Well, Barda has to watch him take his first steps via mother box. Yeah, uh, uh, and our, our Stan Lee fill-in uh, gets his yeah. nostrils instead uh, for part of it. He's like, I can lose to see your nostrils now. P- point it back at him. Yeah. Uh, so, Funky. So yeah. So there's good stuff there. Um, the the fact that she's supposed to have this duel. She's she, she's challenged this other general to a duel, mm-hmm. but she's one like on one. She gets caught up, and uh, Scott has to do the fight instead, and gets the shit yep. kicked out of him. He's like, I almost had him. I'm like, I'm sure you did, honey. Yeah, we'll did. we'll we'll take him in the fall. Like we'll we'll circle back around. Uh, yeah. But again, it's, again, I, I think that's again, it's the metaphor for the idea that sometimes in a in a couple when you, you get new parents, yep. is that like one of them's better at certain things. Like one of them's maybe better at the yep. feeding. One of them's better at the other thing. And the idea that every so often now the the, the parent that's good at that thing won't be there for it. Yeah, so, the other one's just got to do it anyway. Yeah, and probably be terrible at it. You know, if if it's changing the diapers, if they get covered in shit because yep. <laughs> they're yeah. bad at but, it. But they did it. That's the point. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of stuff there, and just the stress of it. You can really feel, you can feel King is like talking about his experience of being a father for the first time, probably. Uh, oh yeah, he's, he's got a couple of kids, so he's obviously went through this. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. and also that there's that last distortion effect. 
mm-hmm. uh, on him as he picks up the kid. But then, you know, it's kind of feel like he's learning to push through it. You know, yeah, because it's, it's of, as, as the kid's crying. And then, mm-hmm. it, and when he goes to pick him up, it's distorting. And then, as he yep. it, it clears up when the baby stops crying. Yeah. yeah. So this idea is again the distortion, the dark side, is all representing his own self doubt, mm-hmm. fear, and depression. The baby's yep. making him fight through it. It's like a light yep. that helps him live and fight. So, yep. uh, you know, the thematic qualities of the book of are bar none. It's funny actually uh, when we do our top ten stories at the end. Um, I, I feel like if you come back in a couple of years when this is all done. Yep. This this could very well be something that starts sneaking Easy. onto those lists. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, do you, so, so do you think King writes in what he's wearing, like the superhero shirt? I, I, I was going to say. Do, I, I was going to say. Do you think Gerard has a challenge to himself? Yeah. Like how many? Well, yeah. On that subject, I think we have to talk about the Superman shirt at one point because there's actually a little thing that happens it if you didn't flips. notice it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's wearing an electric blue Superman shirt, and when the video static effect effect happens, it turns to the it's red. red. Yeah. yeah. So that was a neat little touch. That was a cool one. Uh, he's he's got Wonder Woman at one point. He's got Booster. He's got Aquaman. Got so, Nightwing. One. Nightwing. So I just I want to know who's responsible for for that. So yeah, because it's fun to see his wardrobe. I, I, I assume jump. Gerard just has free reign on that. Yeah, but I could be wrong. I mean, uh, uh, maybe he requests certain ones for a specific scene, like the the maybe. Superman yeah. thing. I wonder if it is just free reign and he just thought that up in the art. He said, hey, Tom, I've got this idea. He's got a Superman shirt on. Uh, what well, if it's the, re- the electric blue, but it turns to the red, you know, during yeah. the glitch? Like, you know, I, well, I can see that. You look at the coloring on that page, and it's blue and red, predominant, you know? Because mm, Funky's is. in blue, uh, Jack's in red. So, and it, it just goes well. And then that the scene right after that where the baby parademon and just, like, the horrors of war with Light Ray. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. And, and how that affects him because he's a dad. Um, yeah. But yeah, just th- I thought they were cloned. I didn't know they had kids. Like, and he grew up in apocalypse, so you know. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a so solid every issue. Yeah, obviously the really art again. We mentioned obviously the coloring there and the the t-shirts, mm-hmm. but um, once again the expressions, the despair in the face, the the lovingness as he, he's finally yeah. sitting on the couch with Bard at the end. It's- all in the pacing for me with Gerard. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, he, he nails the pace in a, in a way that few people do. Yep. 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 He uses that name panel grid to his. Uh... Yeah. Just, I'm, I'm fully just waiting for the final issue where we break out the nine panel grid. We'll get a full page spread at the end, probably. Yeah. Yeah. When, 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 at the end. Yeah. When, when Scott's finally accepted what's going on, when he's in a better headspace, he's not confined to the grid anymore. He's, he, right. he's you know, free to think about more. Hmm. Yeah, he's not trapped by his own depression. Even yeah. that will be yeah. represented in the art by breaking away from the panel grid. Uh, so, so no, uh, not surprising anyone. Fantastic. Uh, it is worth mentioning the May issue got pushed to June, so uh, we'll see you for number nine in a couple of months. Disappointing, but, but uh, you know, whatever. Take his time. Get it, get it for yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah, you, well. c- you can't rush a masterpiece. I, I, ironically, the reason why it's been pushed though is because uh, Jared's just had a kid, and he's he, uh, this is his first yeah. kid, I think. So <laughs> yeah. he's going through all this right now. Funnily enough, oh, I wonder if this like really speaks to him because it's like this is exactly what he's doing. Yeah, I wonder. Just instead of a war, it's the art. That's that's what the going off to the battlefield well, that, is. That's, from what I've heard from parents, when the babies are that young, like being away from them, as you're going through a war every day just to get back to them. You know, so, mm. you know, uh, my cousin, we just met them for dinner last night and they have a four month old and that's what he's like, you know, and he works 11 hour shifts. But as soon as he gets home, he's like, oh, I have new energy as soon as I see my kid. So, hmm. you know, it's, it's crazy. I, I think that's the thing like here. This feels very authentic, doesn't it? Like the <laughs> whole thing. It feels like, OK, this as much as it's, you know, the, this, this fantastical war and, you know, all yeah. the new gods and apocalypse yeah. it still feels real at its core oh yeah mm-hmm. i think that's been true of the whole series everything about it is everything yeah. it's about is real it just happens to be wrapped up in new gods and apocalypse and dark side and yeah yeah all, all the other crazy shit yeah so well and and there's that line of of they make you forget all this your memories and like yeah it's either gods or evolution so you have another kid like you forget all the pain and and whatnot of no sleep and yeah. being cranky. And I'm like, that might be the realest thing I've ever read in a comic book. Is, is that sentiment? Yeah. Might be, yeah. 
Luckily, I hate children, so I'm immune to all this, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking I want to stay from home. No, 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 I don't want to go home and see the little shit. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no, Pete is dark side in the story. <laughs> Uh, I'm okay with that. Well, we have to move on then. We'll move on to Batwoman number 14, Margaret Bennett and Fernando Blanco on the art. Uh, so we know, we're big twist last issue, we know that Alice is behind it all, who's mm-hmm. the, the evil side to Beth, uh, Kate's sister. And mm-hmm. seemingly from this issue, she's actually got Kate infected with a plague of some sort uh, from when she was in the lab <sighs> so, uh, with, uh, with the bats. You know, it's all, all very symbolic. Uh, and Kate's on, on the, the run to try and get to her, to try and stop all this. Uh, as Alice is uh, monologuing, and it seems that uh, Knife is behind all this. She's the one who's like made sure Alice is back. She's taking her out of the asylum, and she's, you know, giving her drugs to make sure she keeps being Alice and all the rest of it. That's the gist of what's going on. Yeah, many arms of death get taken out. The uh, elder and whatever. The, the, yeah, the sister. The, the, the brother and sister. Uh, well, that was the thing we spoke about this last time. We were kind of conflicted on the reveal because it was. Like, okay, as much as it makes emotional sense for this to, like, be Alice to a point, even though it's really to Hanny who's behind it all, uh, yeah. it was like, well, it felt like we were building up, like, a new big villain for, for Batwoman and Sophia. Yeah. And yeah. instead, it turned out to be, no, 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 it's actually just the, the one villain she already had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of a weird... Uh, and, I, and I like that dynamic of her wanting to keep her sister safe, yet her sister being her greatest adversary, mm. right? And so, and then you had Safia, who knows her better, or even the knife, right? Like, if this was just the knife, or Tahini, whatever her name was, uh, then, yeah, but I'm out, I think, after this, because now I'm, uh, once they took out the many arms of death, I was just like, well, that's that's the thing I was excited to see, was this new, you know, her globe trotting with with Penny, uh, with Julia Pennyworth. And, and doing all that stuff, doing the James Bond spy things. And, mm. and now we're just doing a lesser version of something we've already had. And I was like, oh, hers, the sickness again. Like, we've got this. And I, I understand that's that's been seeded through through the stuff with the the foxes and whatnot. But now it's coming to Gotham. And we know that's not how it's going to go. You know? Yeah. Also, I actually laughed out loud in this issue because at one point Julia's like, hey, call in some cavalry, call in, call in spoiler, call in Red Robin. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I've already, this has already ruined my, my real family. I'm not going to ruin my bat family as well. And I actually kind of laugh because, like, you know, give it yeah. in detective, that, that's already done. Like, that's yeah. falling apart it's completely. It's long ruined. Yeah. No, obviously, yeah. it's just set before that. That's fine. That's comics, but it just made me laugh. Yeah. Uh, so. But hey, uh, yeah, I mean, I thought this show was okay. I have to admit, my patience for the the run is kind of dwindling a little bit as we go. Um, yeah. I, I, I think that all the stuff with the island was fine at first. Uh, obviously, mm. we, we, it, was, it was fairly riveting for the first arc, actually. I mean, admittedly, we had uh, yeah. acting on art, which was helping quite a bit. Yeah. But I think the Scarecrow section, I thought, dragged on too long. And uh, yeah. it was a lot of, like, you know... All, all the nightmare stuff just kind of felt like it was... It, it was a bit too long, but I liked it in concept of what it was doing. Well, especially with what it dealt with Colony and, and her dad. You know, yeah, that, she had that, that stuff was with, fine. With Colony Prime. My problem sometimes yeah. with this stuff where they're trapped in their mind and it's going through is that sometimes yeah. it feels like there's not actually a thrilling plot that's happening. It yeah, just kind yeah. of keeps going around in circles until it ends. Uh, and I kind of had that problem with that. But it was, that was okay overall. Um, but I, I, as we keep coming back to this same stuff, I, I'm not particularly into just the overall plot i guess is what yeah I'm I, th- I think i'm with matt i'm being out it feels kind of just derivative at this point yep. it, it's like you know the, the stuff on the island at the start it felt so original and unique and fresh mm-hmm. and now i'm just like yeah okay it's just another well, story and, like, and then like what happened with the island because as we know it became this corporate you know thing coriana and this is where the many arms of death have their headquarters and why would Safia ever ever do that? And you think, oh, she got burned so badly by Kate that she completely changed. Now that was cool. Like, give me that. And then they they just did the bait and switch instead. And it's yeah. I don't I I don't care, especially on a week as big as this. Like, if this is on a quieter week, I'm more inclined. But now I'm just kind of like I think I want to skip it. I think the the only thing that'll get me to come back at this point is if we do a time jump to post detective. Yeah, catch up well, with you know that stuff there. I did see a thing that they are bringing Renee back, so that would you know if we get yeah the that, that was a, that was in the July solicit. Renee's going to be in the book. Yeah. 
so uh, I mean that is interesting. I, I don't know why I say that I'm hard out. Admittedly, it was probably the least excited thing I was to read this week. Well, I'd say when I was going to read, I was like, I don't actually really want to read this. It was kind of just yeah. habit. It's just kind of there. I'm not. I, I don't. I'm not like nothing about it makes me go. Oh yeah, I want to read this. It's, I guess the thing though, it's never really been outright bad though. So it's never been like it's just kind of like so it kept happening, and then the books have been getting stacking up. I meant this was a kind of a weird week because stuff was delayed to this week, and then yeah, whatnot. But um, yeah, I, I I think I'll read issue fifteen. I'll I'll mm-hmm. I'll see where it's going from here. Uh, admittedly, the more exciting stuff is probably after this arc when Montoya's involved. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see what they're doing. I don't know. But um, I did. I, I like the double page spread of the bats all coming out of the city, though. That was the one moment in the art that I thought was 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 quite a nice moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but hey, uh, so yeah, not super stoked on Batwoman uh, right now. Not terrible or by any means, just kind of uh, going through the motions, I guess. Uh, next up, Super Sons number fifteen, uh, Pietro Tomasi and Carlo Barberi on the art. Uh, this is basically Kid Amazo escapes from Luther Corp. Uh, or LexCorp, and it comes after the Super Sons who are hanging out in their underwater base. Uh, mm-hmm. Ends up flooding it, there's some action scenes, there's a banter back and forth, there's a, a running gag that people really like these noodles that uh, you get yeah. in Metropolis. <laughs> Cause, even, uh, even John can't pass them up on the way down. John's like, I want to, I want to marry these noodles, as does the yeah. LexCorp employee. So that's a whole running thing. Um I had fun. I, I, like I say, I think this has uh, been more consistent than Superman, and I think the back and forth yeah. with Robin and Dave, uh, with Robin and Superboy has always been great. Um, yeah. I think the action in this was really good. I, uh, basically, them try to like get out as the the base is flooding and they're swimming mm-hmm. back up to the top. And at first, Robin's carrying Superboy because Robin's kind of like knocked out, and then yeah. Robin can't quite swim to the top because you know they're that far down because the escape pods have been yeah. ruined. Uh, so Superboy wakes up and he tries to fly him to the top, uh, mm-hmm. and the, the whole thing is that Kid Amazo basically he killed his human host like he's yeah, sort of become he this, this extra thing and he wants superboy's body because he can maybe survive longer uh as kid yeah and he's you know, really... I, like that. I like that kid amazo the virus is sentient and because of the nanotechnology it takes the form of that armor mm. and so it could literally like amazo who would adapt the powers though kid amazo could be anybody at this you know what i mean whoever yeah, wears them the big thing at the end, the big reveal is that he's actually captured the Justice League. Because we keep hearing throughout the issue, uh-huh. oh, they're dealing with something, an oil rig. And then we end up at an oil rig yeah. at the end, and it turns out that Kid Amazo's trapped the Justice League and he's only siphoning all their power so that he becomes even more powerful. Because that's his whole thing. So the next issue is that the Super Sons are going to have to save the Justice League, which is a fun uh, capper on the run. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm upset that their base is already done, though. Like, I kind of want... I yeah. like that base. It can be rebuilt, I think. Yeah. They have the technology. A uh, little moment I liked a lot was uh, Damien's doing the weights. He's, you know, he's weightlifting, and yeah. um, John just puts his finger on top of the weights, and now John and Damien can't lift them anymore. Yeah, and he's at like 58, 59. I was like, no, you're not. You just started counting high when John walked in. You know? <laughs> like, Very possibly. Very yeah. possibly. No, that was fine. Yeah. It's bad as it sounds super enthusiastic. We. You're not into it as oh, much. It was a fun read. I had much more fun reading this than I did Batwoman. That's for sure. So, you know. Uh, that's fair. Honestly, I, I think I still enjoyed this more than Superman. Uh, I put them about the same. Uh, uh, I, I like the sentimentality of, of Superman, so that didn't that didn't bother me like it did you. I, I think it was just too much in Superman, whereas this actually had some fun action sequences. All the stuff with the yeah. the swimming through the water and trying to like escape from him underwater. Uh, you know, Robin doing his like you know his deep blue and sea impression, but like, I, I need to go get the breathers, and he's like diving under and try to get the things. Like all oh, all that stuff was super yeah. funny to me. Uh, so uh, that was that was into it. But uh, hey, we got one issue left. Issue sixteen next month is the final issue. So. Uh, we'll see how it wraps up with this two-part story, and we'll see uh, if we get an announcement maybe by then about where the kids are going to end up, because as we said earlier, Tomasi's kind of hinting that he's still doing something with them. Uh, so we'll move on then to Aquaman number 35, Dan Abner and Robson Roca on the art. So this is a different artist, actually, than what was before. The colorist, mm-hmm. though, seems to be the same, because it still kept that style, the colouring. It has, but it's yeah. a bit flatter. Uh, that's fair, that's fair. Uh, but it was noticeably different though because obviously we had that one one shot with the completely different art uh, which yeah. was notably completely different uh, so this felt like it was still more back to the, the style that it, it was before it makes sense that last issue was okay let's focus on someone else so we've yeah. got a different style for that I think this is okay return to the main story return to style 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we've got the nine trade King Shark, all the rest of them fighting with the the, the king's men. Uh, as Wrath, because of the power that he's unleashed, uh, transforms into a big monster dude, and uh, Ar- Arthur encounters uh, Mark, and Mark kind of goes, "Yeah, I didn't kill you. I intentionally faked your death, but I was hoping you'd leave." And he's kind of like fighting Arthur because no, I don't want you to be king again. Until Arthur's like, "I'm not going to be king again." <laughs> like, there's, we got Mira. She's going to be queen. Yeah. Oh, you're not. Okay, cool. We're, we're on the same side. Yeah. Uh, that's basically how that pretty, went. Pretty much. Uh, no, that was a decent issue. It was not a standout, but it was definitely much better than last month's. Uh, yeah, yeah I like I like King Shark and Jurok like teaming up because Jurok is the beast master of Atlantis. So mm. you put him with the Shark Man. I thought it was yeah. cool. Uh, I also like that the the magic mutates. You know, uh, what was his name? Cadaver. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of not so big on that side of things. It's like, oh well, oh. we need some big things to hit. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of what it feels like to me. Whereas before it was like, okay, no, well, it felt more hard mean, hitting like, when there were corrupted. armies that looked at each other, right? Oh yeah, I just mean it in the way that this is why this silent school locked away the magic in the well, right? Because it, you know, not just it doesn't just corrupt; it physically corrupts. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I get it. It's, it's just oh. it's, it's the least interesting part of the whole. Like run of the story because I was saying the idea that it's kind of this civil war. It's you know okay, it's just people yeah. against people. It's very human and yeah, that that made it feel real to me. That's Whereas fair. here it's like okay, now it's just a big evil thing to hit. Because uh, when Wrath turns into like a monster, if when, when I thought it was just his face, I liked it because it was like oh, because he's like oh, you've turned me into one of these. Uh, yeah, it's w- personified. What was it they called? Call them the uh, the, uh, the the mutants essentially. I forget that the word they use. Uh, Atlantis for yeah. it, but they were sea changed, and there was hey, I can't remember the actual yeah. term. But yeah, he's like, oh, you yeah. made me one of those. No, I don't mean one of those. It was, it was like a racist person becoming part like mixed race yeah. or something like that. Is it, taint, it, taint, it, taint blood? Taint blood. That was it. Was, oh, you made me a taint blood. But then he kept transforming, and I'm like, okay, I liked it when it was just like part of it because it was like, okay, he's becoming what he's like uh, biased against. Whereas yeah. this coming a giant monster was like, okay, so we're going to have him fit. Which don't get me wrong, I don't hate it because. I kind of like Aquaman uh, the most when it's dealing with sea monsters because that's kind of I, yeah. I like the horror underwater aspect of it. I, I agree, but I don't think it fits in this story. I think that's fair. Um, I, I kind of yeah. agree with that. It that's doesn't true. ruin it for me, but it does definitely yeah. not where I was expecting it to to go. It, it take it takes me. Yeah, like I said, it, it it could still be pretty good at the end, but it yeah. takes it down a notch of where it could have been. Yeah, I, I mean, no, nothing in here uh, put me off the the story or the run. Um, it was definitely much better than last month's issue, but it wasn't necessarily as great as what a lot of the stuff that it has been building up to the fighting and whatnot. Mm. So, yep. um, but now next next week we got the presumably everyone teaming up together to take on big horrible wrath and uh, yep. and cadaver and all the rest of it. So, well, yeah, because it, it, the senators finally realize he's insane. Yep, and they they've turned on him. He is no longer the senate. Yeah, that's that's when, that's when he bursts out the the door. Actually, so they're about yeah. to tell him, "Oh yeah, we've all agreed that you're not going to be king anymore because <laughs> you're nuts." Yep. Uh, so, so no. Uh, but I'm looking forward to this developing. It still feels like it's got a direction, which is nice. Uh, this was this was yep. mostly just a punchy punchy issue. So yeah, uh, mm-hmm. which hey, so um, that'll take us on to the Brave and the Bold Batman and Wonder Woman number three. Liam Sharp, mm-hmm. of course, uh, doing the, the 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 both the art and the the, the script. So. Um, uh, how did you feel about this? Batman wakes up and turns on the dog, and he is uh, he's he's confused at first, but then he realizes, oh yeah, you pulled me here, uh, and I'm here to solve the oh. murder. I love the stuff with the fairies in the pool, and yeah. he's like, whoever's over here, female. Like, I thought that was funny. I I, I really like Bruce being so confused and kind of being out of yeah. it. It's it's different. We don't see it very often. Yeah, no. yeah. Uh, and I like his reasoning too, because deep down he's always looking for the ration, the rational, and you know the reasonable. Yeah, because yeah, uh, even even when he's dealing with magic, and he he kind of says like yep. he knows that it's magic, it, it defies all of it, but he still needs to base so, his thought process. Yeah, because yeah. because what he says is when Wonder Woman like takes him out and they go they go questioning some people and stuff, he's like, I have to understand the rules of this place before I can actually be a detective. Um, yep. So he's trying to like understand things, and he remembers this thing he used to hear from this old nanny he had about you can see through the magic if you've got a stone that's got like a natural hole in it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, because uh, yeah, I, I, I did like the line where he says, uh, "There's a difference between uh, invisibility and stealth." He's like, "Yeah, I knew you yeah. were there the whole time," because like, yeah, you just couldn't see him. Yeah, yeah I like that. That was, that was a nice and, touch. Uh, 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 I have to admit though, I wasn't super hot in this issue. Um, no, there's a lot of 
fill in the gaps. Not yeah, fill in the gaps, there was like, a lot, a lot of talking that wasn't super exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the catch Batman up to speed issue. Yep. Yeah, and I'll be honest, I was um, kind of zoning out through a lot of the explanations. Yeah, so I, I wasn't like uh, I agree that it wasn't as good as the, the previous two, but I can tell that that Sharp really loves Irish mythology, and as a fan of mythology, mm. uh, yeah. even if it, I'm just learning all this new stuff, it it's there. And I can appreciate that. I, I love uh, but, Batman going through his deductive processing. Yeah, like all that stuff is fantastic. With with, well, him him realizing that everything's it's it's a play, like they're stuck there forever with each other because we find out that Jernanog has a border. Like Themyscira, it's this weird paradox where there's no limits to it. Like the island just goes forever and. As, it's play much project. Like, if you keep walking in one direction, you'll come back yeah, to the other side. <laughs> but but it's it's to keep them there. It's like it would be cruel to keep the Amazons there, like on a prison, right? Because it's not their prison. Versus right. here, Tiranog almost feels like a prison. And what's keeping the two sides there? And they do magic on themselves. You find out from Kiranos that yeah, no, we we do this. This happens every couple cycles where. We fight, we make up, and then we forget, and we fight again. Yeah, yeah. and it's just about, you know, we've been forgetting so long, we don't even know yep. why we're here anymore. Like, did, they don't know if they were sent here as a punishment or if they brought themselves here to lock them away for the safety of the, the yeah. world. But and, all, all that stuff, the, the, the cycle of mythology. Is, yeah, is really because everyone loved the king that died. Uh, it was the king of the Fomorians, uh, yeah. king of Leto, and it doesn't make any sense who would kill him because, again... They do these fights, but no one, no one's ever really died from them before. Yeah, yeah. Like, and they say uh, they keep doing these raids on the villages, but no one's dying. It's just the king. It's, it's all. It's all. Like I say, it's all a show. Right. And I so I like Batman piecing that together. And and Kernanos, Kernanos, how do we pronounce it? Uh, he he's like, oh yeah. And then they bring up Balor, who's the you know, the the big evil demon, the all-seeing yeah. eye hmm. of Irish mythology, and. They kind of tease him at the end. He's sitting on this throne. Kind of reminded me of the of, of the, the the Iron Islands in Game of Thrones. Yeah, okay, I can, I can see it. You know, which which funnily enough, George R. R. Martin based off of Ireland itself. You yes. know, uh, so you know, just the fact that they all go into each other, and he's sitting there. So you kind of you think that you know, because Kernanos brings up that they've even kind of forgotten what the original monsters look like. That Theon McCool. Had had fought, and yeah. and here's that hint that oh no I think I think that Balor's coming. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think so because you know, like he said, uh, Ken says to them, it's like, hey, uh, it's it's all just oral tradition at this point, which yep. again, you know, plays into the idea of especially Irish mythology, uh, which yep. is is mostly or oral, mm-hmm. and you know, the idea that you know, none of them actually really remember it. It's just these stories and legends and how they've been kind of blown out of proportion and. So it'll be really interesting when we get to, to Balor, like, okay, what can he actually do? Uh, how much of it was exaggerated, or what have they forgotten? Yeah. Well, it definitely will be a coup de grace, for sure, yeah. when he shows up. I sailed way over Connor's head. It, it, it really did. It really did. In fact, the only reason why I remember the name of the dude at the end was Balor is because of the wrestler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the only reason why I remember well, that. So it's great. I remember when he came in, he, he took the name, he, he went from his name, Fergal Devitt, and it became Finn Balor. And Finn, based off of the hero, Finn McCall. Yeah, I mean, Bal- Finn also very Irish sounding. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. Um, and, and then Balor. So, so it's these two sides at war within himself. And then you look at this story. And it's the two sides. It's the Fomorians and the the Dedanin. Yeah. And and they're at war with each other. And it's just yeah. Uh, yeah I, it's it's I, very much the crux of the, the Celtic mythology yeah. is, the, is the balance between them. Yeah. I, I have to admit, um, I appreciate your enthusiasm for this, but I was kind of just asleep throughout most of this issue. Um, That's fine. It's I, basically I, like you can you even compare it to Game of Thrones at one point. There's something I also don't like. Um, a lot of this Celtic mythology is getting into magic y stuff, and I just don't to, like to be magic. Fair, that I don't much. think it's, it's mostly not Game of Thrones, it's just the visual design of, at the yeah, end. That's what I mean. Well, yeah. Oh, sure. But yeah, even my other point, though, is that it's feeling really magic y, and I don't think that. that This feels like someone who's really into this stuff, really putting all these references in, putting these names in. I don't think it's actually making it palpable for someone who knows nothing about any of this stuff. Um, 
Yeah, I, I'll agree there. I just I'm the type of person that once I come across this, yeah, I want to know all about it. Like um, it's, it's, yeah. for, for me, it's the opposite. For, for me, when it comes to this type of subject, you have to actively make me engaged in it, and it's not really doing that on its own. It's just kind of thrown it at me, and as a result, I'm kind of zoning out and not really taking a lot of it in. Um, so, honestly, I think I'm just like, I'm going to read the next three. I think I'm just going to leave you guys to cover this because that's fine. Maybe. I, I, it's just a taste thing. I'm just not into it. Um, and even at the end, when it cut to that last page, and we see Balor sitting in his throne. I didn't feel like we built up to that. I felt like it just, oh, here's a tease for the villain. Well, I mean, no, but he was referenced a couple of times yeah. during the issue. They talked about him. Oh, during like, the issue, but I just mean the scene before. I didn't really well, feel then, like we were building up to some anything. And then they, they, they also ended. talk about the, yeah, they also talk about the two, uh, the the two gods, Danu and and was it Mor- Mor- Morgan? Morgan, yeah, and so. I'm sure they'll they'll show up at some point too. So I just I can appreciate that Sharp's doing this, and it's a passion project yeah. for yeah. him. It, 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 it sounds like something. It. If you're into this stuff, it sounds like you enjoy it. I I feel like the more I get into it, the the more I'm feeling alienated that it's not actually making it palpable for me in any way. It's just not introducing the concepts in neat ways yeah. that actually you know slowly build upon it and build upon it. It's just throwing me into the deep end, and I'm just not taking anything from it. To be fair, I think uh, the, the first two issues were the deep end. This issue where Batman's here and we're walking through it, this is the issue where it kind of builds these things up and say, like, okay, these are the rules. Like you say, you know, okay, okay time passes differently here. There's a hard border. Yep. These are, you know, okay, it's like a play. Like you say, you know, all these things are being established in this issue. Uh, and if I wasn't falling asleep at them describing it, maybe that'd be cool. But I just don't think he's as, he's not this... as good at writing the dialogue as he is drawing the pictures, is basically what I'm saying. Uh, this this issue, it, I make the corkboard meme, where I, I see a new name and I have to go and research it so I know, um, you know, this is why it fits in, and and not everybody's gonna do that. I was rereading. So I, I understand where Pete's coming. I, from. I was rereading bubbles because I, I would get to the bottom of the page and realize that I've taken no information in an entire page, and I had to go back and read it again. <laughs> yeah. I, I it just like it just, it was making me just want to sleep, and it was yeah. I I found this such a chore to get through this this time that I think mm-hmm. I'm just out. Uh, but uh, you guys like fair. you guys can cover the no, rest I'm, of I'm it. Enjoying it. I think uh, me and Matt are very much people that mythology we we are interested. It doesn't matter which mythology. It's no. just, you know the the concepts the the structure. For me, it does. Theme, for, for, play for, well for us. when you start getting into fairies and you start getting into uh, gods and stuff, I'm less interested in that. And it's because this is the thing. I don't really care about gods at all. But when Rucka was doing his stuff in Wonder Woman. Yeah. It was presented to me in a way that well, was appealing. Well, that's all context. It was, yeah, yeah. you know... Well, see, I'm, I'm also bringing my love for the Norse mythology into this because the two sides remind me of, of yeah. the Acer veneer. I, I, even I just, down to the way they're designed, so... I, th- I think it's how you dish the information out. I think it's just a way yeah. to draw someone into the story and just the way Sharp's doing it's not doing it for me at all. Um, Fair enough. But, uh, the art's nice, of course, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, that's great. It, it goes without saying. And mm-hmm. uh, As much as I'm enjoying this, I... I really hope that stuff at the start is true i, I want oh, yeah. a, big, a big proper book yeah a big proper book with someone else doing the words well and that, that <laughs> puts this there's three issues left there's three months till july yeah. so he'd be ready to go and all yeah also he would gotten ahead in this since, since he was doing all of it himself yeah i'm sure he was oh, ahead yeah, when, yeah. Start, when we, when we but first I'm get... saying, like, there would be there'd be zero waiting for us yeah to go to jump you know what yeah. i mean so so no um but yeah uh, so that, that's uh, that's the last book actually and I think we'll do all the best ofs and stuff before we get to the extra episode 100 yep. portion of the show so as always when we finish the books we, we talk about our favourites of the week, favourite panel slash moment favourite cover, best art and top 5 books of the week so uh, that's cover. what we're going to do uh, so panel slash moment and we're, we're kind of leaving action comics out of this because that has yeah. multiple stories it's yeah. hard to kind of sort of and we, we picked all of that for itself yeah. yeah so we're just going with the books that we we talked about today uh so connor best panel slash moment oh god um i think it's got to be the the page in in batman of uh the, the noose coming down and and skeets kind of, kind of realizing too late what's going on that killed me okay all right matt yeah, so mine, mine. It's more of a page, but it's Booster explaining why he did this, just because of the different expressions, and it's hard to pick just one. It's the it's the sequence of it that makes that. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm kind of... I'm not sure, because... Yeah. Huh? My heart says it's something from Mr. Miracle by default, because it's been such a heavily picked mm-hmm. book for yeah. this uh, <laughs> in all previous times. Um, and, but there's a lot of great stuff in Batman. That that cannot be denied. I'll, I'll be honest, yeah. I'm surprised Matt didn't pick something from Superman. Maybe yeah. you know, when it they're, was... they're ripping open the shirts or something. Until So until that, it, it was that, until I read Batman this morning, because um, I, I saved it towards the last because it's booster, and when he brought up Black Mercy, uh, I'm just like, oh, all right, well. And then the <laughs> hilarity that ensues that he just ruined Batman's life as a present, it far and away went ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, ultimately, as much as I'm, I'm looking through Miracle just now, uh, which was fantastic, I actually think I'm, I am going to have to also pick something from Batman. I think um, I... So you, I mean, I like the ones you guys picked. I think just to be different, I'm going to say yeah. the uh, uh, Green Lantern Hal uh, killing himself with the ring. Well, it's eerie. A great opening. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's, it's, just, it's got this super weird... Because you immediately go, why is he doing this, though? What's happening? And then, obviously, over the course of the book, you find out the idea of Jokers and the idea that Dick is uh, taking superheroes out because they could become Jokerized. And I'm like, okay, all right, so that's what happens. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. As, as much as I love Mr. Miracle, because you know, we all do... I don't think it had the standout moments this issue. It was no. it, as a whole, it's fantastic. But Batman had all these moments that you go, yeah, that, yeah there's that. Yeah. All right, so uh, next up, best cover of of the week, uh, Matt. What you got? So this one is from Superman. Uh, it's it's the Superman cover. Makes the logo in the clouds, and then you have the family trudging through what looks like a wheat field. Yeah, um, that is a, a real nice cover. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that, that that ain't bad. I'm actually, I'm 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 taking the time to glance at some variants here because <laughs> yeah. I don't see them as easily. Yep. Uh, I uh... I think I may have to go with the the Batman variant actually. So Jim Lee cover, who's not necessarily someone I always gravitate towards, but I actually I like it because Batman's kind of on the roof pointing and Superman's flying up. Because obviously all the all the variants this month or a lot of them are Superman variants because it's you know because yeah. of the yeah. anniversary and Action One Thousand. Uh, and there is this kind of like Superman's, uh, Batman's pointing and Superman's flying above him. It's a really nice uh, image. I oh, no, that is a nice image. Uh, but yeah, that's my pick. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the variant for Aquaman. It's not I bad. I really yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. That one's a good one. Yeah. Ain't bad. Uh, mm-hmm. So cool. Uh, so then you've got best art of the week. Oh my god, what a tough week. This, this is a week where we got Gerard's Sharp and Daniel. I'll, uh... I'm going to go with Daniel. It's about, Gerard's is fantastic. Wow. But I think, because I've not seen Daniel, this is like Daniel's best work in a while, as well. And because it, it's, it was, you know, because I expect Gerard's to be fantastic, but the fact that Daniel came in and did what he did uh, with all of his moments and his sequential art there. Yeah, do you know what? I think I'm going to agree because it's the. Sequ- I, I expect fantastic action from from Daniel, mm-hmm. but the the subtleties in his sequential storytelling this week really impressed me in a way that he hasn't done very often. So, Matt, yeah. what are you what are you picking? Yeah, well, so I thought I was going to be the only one that was going to pick Daniel. That's why I was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 but your reasons though. But he drew Booster Gold this week, so Daniel wins. You took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> like, he draws a really nice booster. I mean, like, sure, Jared's put Booster on a T-shirt this week, but we had actual Booster did. Gold in Batman. I went from having zero Booster Gold in in Rebirth, not Rebirth, uh, New Fifty Two, to like I don't want to say too much. There's no such thing, but a lot of there's a, a little bit of Booster in, in New Fifty Two. Yeah, not enough. Like it wasn't until convergence. That no, I really... was there before that. It was with the the with Jonah Hex. This is the international, but that got cancelled super quick. Yeah, it had him in the past with Jonah Hex. Yeah, well, who read Jonah Hex beside you? I, I did. It was I said who beside you? Yeah, but they should have been. <laughs> True. Never, I never. I I read like forty of the new fifty two books that started, maybe forty five, and I didn't read Jonah Hex. Me neither. Or all- I think it was All-Star Western when it started. It was. Actually. It was re- renamed as All-Star Western. It was yeah. the exact same team as before. Um, what, was, what was it saying? 
Uh, aye, so the best start of the week. We picked that. Yes, okay. So, but yeah. top five books. We're top five books of the week. Connor, you first. Oh, God. Um, I, I think I've got to give it to Batman at number one. And Miracle at two. Uh, I'm going to give it to Superman three, Brave and the Bold four, and Green Lanterns five. Cool, Matt. All right, so my number one also is Batman. My number two is Mr. Miracle. My number three is Superman. My number four is Brave and the Bold. And my number five is... uh, Do I go... Let's go Green Lanterns. Cool. So identical to mine, right? Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, sounds like it. Uh, That's why I didn't know if I wanted to switch it up or not, but I chose not to. Yeah, my top five. I'm going to put Batman at number one. Um, oh. I'll have Mr. Miracle at number two. Uh, Green Lanterns at number three. Super Suns at number four. And... Yeah, Superman at number five. So, uh, it's a really strong week, though. This is the strongest week we've had in a while, even, even aside from Action Comics 1000. Um, yeah... Uh, uh, the last few weeks, I feel like I've been going, yeah, you know, there's there's a couple of good books, but hasn't no, been actually, a, no, I, I think Detective and Flash uh, last week were enough to no, make that, that feel I mean. full. There, there, there was uh, there's, the last few weeks, there's been a couple of good books here, a couple of good books there, but this was across the board, like, a much better week overall. But was it? I mean, look at all these things that you wouldn't have picked for your top five, though. I don't know. I, I read eight, I think. Yeah, you didn't love Batwoman. You didn't love Justice League. You didn't love uh, Nightwing. You know, just... Yeah, yeah, but I mean, there are two good books. Versus, okay, I've got five here that I really like. Whereas mm. last week, I'm like, okay, there's two I really like, and then, you know, okay, here's a couple here or there. All right, okay. So Carl's just miserable all the time. That's, uh, we've established that. Um, this week, that's my point. Um... But hey, so yeah, that's the topics of the week. Now, normally this would bring us to the end of the show. I'll tell you what's coming next week, though. We'll do that before we mm-hmm. uh, get on to the, the irregular stuff. Uh, coming next week, we have Detective Comics 979, Wonder Woman 45, The Flash 45, Batgirl number 22, Teen Titans 19, The, T- the Terrific, sorry, number 3, Hal Jordan, The Green Lantern Corps number 43, we got Mira, Queen of Atlantis number 3, um, I will probably try and catch up and talk about Titans Annual number 2 since it's essentially the end of Abnett's run. Uh, that may mm-hmm. be worth doing. Uh, also, out next week uh, is a silence on number four, um, and then also out, but we will, will not be covering is Batman Beyond nineteen, D- the Demon Hell is Earth number six, Hellblazer twenty one, Just Leave America number twenty nine, uh, Raven Daughter of Darkness number four, and Suicide Squad number forty. So uh, that's what's coming next week. More, much more of a normal week next week in terms of the amount we're covering. Yes. But, uh, also coming out in trade is the Golden Age, which is James Robinson, which is hmm. almost weird to think. But uh, if you guys haven't read that, uh, I would so check the, it out. The, the JSA story one. Yep, the JSA yeah, Golden that, Age. That's, that's been on my to-read list cool. for a long time. It's, that's just um, very good. Read. I read it last summer, finally, and it's fantastic. And if you buy digital comics, of course, there's a big Superman sale on Comixology right now, oh. um, along with um, uh, another small sale that's happening as well for the last few days, which is some random trades in it. For yeah, reason. you get a code for 60% off, but some stuff's already reduced. Like There's some... Rebirth Volume One's in there, like uh, Supergirl, uh, Superwoman's in there. So it's it's, like, it's really like, cheap. It's literally three books: it's Supergirl, Superwoman, and uh, Super Sons. I think Super Sons in there. It wasn't actually the Superman books. I know that much. It was three super characters, but not Superman himself. Yeah. But uh, regardless, uh, I, I picked up uh, Just League of America, Silver Age Volume One and Two for real cheap in there. So mm-hmm. there's, there's some stuff to grab. Uh, so you have until like uh, end of Monday to, to to check that stuff out if you want to grab that. Um, all right, so that wraps up the the show, the regular oh. show, and takes us into the the extra special episode one hundred portion. So as episode one hundred, uh, obviously it's a normal number worth celebrating. We didn't ever celebrate episode fifty because we celebrated episode fifty two because we're a DC podcast yep. and and fifty two is an important number. But what we're going to do for episode one hundred is much like uh, for fifty two, we did our top ten characters, our heroic characters. This is going to be our top ten stories. But before we get to that, we actually have a special message from our one of our patrons, uh, David, who uh, of course is the one who subjects Connor to uh, the the, the mm-hmm. red hoods and the outlaws every month in Connor's corner, has uh, got a message that he'd like me to read, uh, and he uh, 
yeah, so I'll, I'll read it. It explains everything in and of itself. Uh, so here we go. Uh, so, my name is David, but you may know me better as the guy who makes Connor read Red Hood. Seeing as my name is at the end of every video, I just wanted to personally congratulate you all on 100 episodes of Comics from the Multiverse. Being able to stick uh, with someone for this long and with this consistently is really an accomplishment. If this were a Marvel-themed podcast, you'd probably be on your 12th all-new number one after eight cancellations. How true that is. How true that is. Yeah. I'd almost want to do it just for the gimmick. <laughs> just to no. play into it. Just, it's not worth it. We'll, we'll do, do five Marvel episodes, then we'll relaunch number one, fresh start. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's a funny gimmick. Um, I can almost be a segment at the end. If I, if someone has a, one Marvel book they want to talk about, we'll, we'll number that mm-hmm. segment and then relaunch it every six months. Anyway, so continuing this statement. Um, I feel the need to especially mention Connor, who has been forced to th- read through Red Hood month after month because of me. I should probably apologise. Anyway, in honor and uh, sorry, in honor and recognition of your three-digit milestone, I will be donating an extra one hundred dollars for the month of May. Thank you all so much for the entertainment week after week, and I hope your show continues for at least until Connor Kent becomes canon again. Pfft, yeah, look, look forward to that. Right, uh, yeah. And the last little bit here. Oh, and I suppose that extra donation means that I claim a few extra more Connor corners for the month of May. I guess I'll use this chance to finally get you caught up in your favourite outlaws. You'll still be one issue behind after all is said and done, and well, I would, would hope that you'll just catch up completely on your own free will. Your, your mic's going, Matt. Uh, <laughs> it's not like I can make you do something you don't want to do. Oh, wait, that's exactly what I'm doing. Once more, congrats and thank you all, David. Wait a minute, are we sure David's not just Pete's alter ego? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he Pete has that money to throw around. So he to punish Connor. So so, so for the record, what what has just happened? All on the congratulations, which we thank you, David, for. Of course, uh, David's been a big supporter of the show uh, over you know most of the episodes. I don't I don't know how early it was uh, when we launched the Patreon. Basically, is he's yeah. been a supporter since then. Um, so thank you to him. He's been a big supporter. But what's basically just happened throughout that is that for the month of May, Connor's reading the Red Hood four weeks in a row. Yeah. So you're getting weekly no justice reviews and weekly red hood reviews for the month of May. Yeah. Matt, Matt did you know about this or is this the I first did show? not. So no, I, I, I specifically didn't tell him. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred dollar donation. Oh, that's so sweet. But I'm hitting Connor in the face. Oh. Yeah. Lots of Connor's corner for the month of May. So as you said, this will get you up to like one issue behind what the current issue is. So you'll be pretty caught up. So that's exciting. It's a scary thought. I, I thought I was excited for May with no justice, but there's no justice for Connor. <laughs> nope. Oh, good boy. Proud of, proud of that anyway, so uh, thank you, David, once again. That is uh, is fantastic uh, and greatly appreciated. Um, and with that, we can get into our special episode 100 uh, top 10 that we have uh, prepared. Uh, we are doing our top 10 stories, DC stories, of course, of all time. I think it's worth mentioning that we all felt very un- unconfident about these lists that are constantly changing. And this is basically just an idea of a snapshot of this. I think maybe yeah. in a couple of years' time, it'll be even easier to do this when we've read more stories, there's more to do, that kind of thing. No, no, no. That makes it harder because there's more stories to choose. Between. Yeah. My, my so, problem so was as... I didn't know what to have. It was like, I've got way too many options. So I was reordering as we were going through our best of. Um, and I still might reorder right now as we go. So yeah, I'm this is this good. I'm not confident. Of course, of course. No. Uh, no, what, what I mean by that is is I feel like there's a lot of stuff from Rebirth that I could have considered, but I decided to just ignore most of it because it's not been enough time. I wanted to just say, oh no, I am only picking classic stuff that I definitely know I love, for the most part, um, because there's one Rebirth thing that's kind of snuck on there. Um, oh but, yeah, so... And I wanted to try and spread out the love a little bit. I didn't want it to be mostly one character kind of thing, you know, all, all, all this stuff. Uh, so... Yeah, I, I think we'll go around Robin. We'll do, you know, we'll each do a number ten, yep. and we'll we'll go around in a circle. So I think we'll we'll start with Matt, uh, and Man. then we'll go to Connor, then me, and then we'll we'll roll through. Uh, so what's your number ten, Matt? So so my number ten should come as no surprise that I'm going to lead off with this character, because it's one that Pete has told me does not exist <laughs> yet through Rebirth. We've had some appearances, and there's a lot to pull from for Connor Kent, right? He he came up in uh, Death of Superman as the Metropolis Kid. He had his whole short run. But where I really started to, to like the character was in Teen Titans. But this isn't a Teen Titans story. This is his first uh, foray into to a solo book by Jeff Johns. 
and Francis Vanderpool. It's called The Boy of Steel. It was his triumphant return after mm-hmm. the uh, Legion of Three Worlds event that brought him back post infinite no, post final crisis. And it's just it's wonderful. It's him trying to deal with being half Kent, half Luther, and there's this really great panel of things Superman would do and things Luther would do, and he's trying to balance them. And and through this he ends up, you know, making friends with Luther's niece, who has her own set of of issues. So it's basically a, a retelling of Superman tropes through Connor, who is a completely flawed super family member and his own deals with, with oh, oh, he's Luther's flawed. and Smallville. He's absolutely yes. flawed. And again, Francis Manipal, Jeff Johns, I that's a dream team of mine. Anytime they get together, it's it's a good time. Uh, Lemire ended up writing uh, some of those too, uh, and he, he took it over at a certain point, but it was a Johns and Manipal run that really really yeah. enters my top ten. All right, cool. Connor, number ten. Yeah, so... Uh, my number 10 is Robin Year One. Mm. And this was actually very conflicted with Batgirl Year One because they pair up really well and you know, they're often collected together. So it was a, a real tough choice. But uh, ultimately, I went with the, the Robin because I think it's it's a simpler story. It's much tighter. It's only four issues. Mm. And it's just a, a fantastic look at you know a, a young Dick Grayson. And, and it, it's not so much what inspires him to become Robin, but it's just, okay, how does he cope with becoming Robin? How does he deal with it? Hmm. And it's a it's a gorgeous book. The art's fantastic. And it's just, it's it's so tightly paced in its story. My number 10. And that was, that was a good amount of time there. Matt, Matt, Matt waffled on a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If we all went at that, that length, we'd be here for another Yeah, like, at least minutes. at number 10, let's keep it short. Yeah. Uh, I got you, but let's wrap Connor, because that's the only time he's popping up. Oh. God damn right it is. Uh, in fact, while we're, while we're on that, there's my, my classic button there for Matt. There you go. <laughs> this is the button I like. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind it. All right, my number 10 is actually my one and only uh, Rebirth era story because I wanted to represent Wonder Woman, right? And I, I could have went with Ruckus first run, but that's the stuff that I, I love. Uh, and I went with that uh, because I, I, we were talking about this off air at some point about like if we like a whole run do we just say the run and we could have done that but i wanted to try and force a bit of conversation and be specific about like what is your favorite part kind of thing uh so i've actually went with god watch uh which was the second story uh, set in the past and the reason for this is because i think this is where the emotional beats for veronica kale the story of her daughter the fact that she's the one who's kind of like intervenes and stops wonder woman from saving barbara ann and that's what kind of leads to her becoming cheetah that, that i feel like that's where the emotion of the run really hit the hardest in a lot of ways um, and it, it made the villain sympathetic it, it made this great tragedy out of Cheetah um, and it doesn't have uh, the weakest issue of the run which is issue 8 which was the, the Barbara Ann Indiana Jones issue which no one likes um, and if you're not if, you, if this is your first episode uh, I'm just that's a joke because Matt loves that issue I actually do like that issue a lot that was just a pure joke um, but no, that's why I, I picked that because I, I think the emotion of it and obviously the art from Evely was fantastic and uh, great stuff so yeah. There you go. I just say I think it's funny you mentioned there how okay we're condensing this to just story arcs mm-hmm. rather than entire runs. That for the most part actually made me consider. Uh, I, I was going for I end up with a lot of standalone stories rather than because I couldn't condense a run because I was like okay what what about I, I think, that run specifically yeah. is the the one part that stands above everything. Else? And because we're only doing ten, whenever it was a run where I could have picked a couple of things, I, I made a point of just saying I'll pick one and not even think. Like, you know, no, yeah. e- even if like technically one should be number two and one should be number six because I love them both that much. I'm like, no, no, I want more varied things happening. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so Matt, what's your number nine? So my my number nine, it you bring up the Barbara Ann story, <laughs> and and it's not it's not my number nine. So uh, it's number one. It, but you're gone. Yeah. So. <laughs> I really love the Jeff Johns era on Green Lantern, but I had a very hard time mm. picking a specific story. Mm. And, you know, up until this morning, I had Blackest Night picked. But then I thought, there's one standalone story that I keep going back to that no one, you know, really remembers. So I feel like it's this dream that I might have had. But I looked it up, and it exists. <laughs> and He uh, double-checked ch- double it existed before he picked it. I double-checked it. it. Good sign. And it, it's... Uh, I... I I didn't get the name though when I double checked this morning. So you don't have the it, name of the your your, st- no, your pick. <laughs> I, I have to. It's so it's a story. That, I think it's called uh, the Black Core, right? 
and it was before they put in these these rules of the Green Lantern Corps that there's different light spectrums, and it involves uh, Guy Gardner going undercover with this new ring that you swallow it, and it only is powered for 24 hours. And he's partnered with this Derlin undercover cop, and they go and they bust up this ring, and they come to find out that Guy's not, you know, he's not subtle enough to be undercover. Surprising, oh, of right? Course, yeah. I, I remember so he, this now that you talked about it. Yeah, so he gets booted, and his partner that he was on the team ends up going off with the Derlin, and they're never seen again. Yeah, like, they, they, they were like the, the, the you, know, you know how like, now we have like, you know, the, the honor guard yeah. rings. Uh, yeah. Yep. It's like that, but they, they were like a separate division. They were like, no, we, we're the, the hard hitters. We're the, the, the Black Ops crew. Yep. I think my, my, my first comment on hearing this, I don't, I don't recall, was this in the main Green Lantern title or was this in Green Lantern Corps? This is in Green Lantern Corps before Tomasi took over. It was uh, written okay. by Dave Gibbons. Yeah, yeah and... Because um, uh, my, my first thought there was like, wait, why is it, how is it even a ring if you swallow it? Like, sure that it's yeah. just a pill. Yeah, I, I don't remember that yeah. part, so I, mm-hmm. but I, it was when you started talking about the, the Derlin part. Yeah. And, you know, yep. I was like, oh, I, I can't remember this now. Yep, and so basically you swallowed the ring and it gave you like this black energy instead of green. And the, yeah, they had a lot of black yeah. suits and stuff for the stuff. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'll give you credit, man. This is a really specific pick. I'll, I'll give it you that. Is. So, and uh, and I could have gone with Blackest Night, which uh, was really what I had, but I remembered the story this morning and went, oh yeah, that was a that was a good one. Plus, okay. it's Guy Gardner, so I got him on my list. All right, uh, Connor, number nine. Yeah, it's number nine. This is actually a a single issue one shot. This is a it's it's an oversized anniversary issue. This was uh, Jonah Hex issue fifty. Uh, so the the, the run you know, before mm. the the new before it renamed to, to All Star West and this was it it's still uh, you know Palmiotti and Connor and you had uh, Darwin Cook doing the art and it's this fantastic story it's got it's got this this horror there's a there's action to it it's, you know it's John Hex this this bounty hunter it's this this really tough relationship between them and the back and forth and just the the tragedy of it by the end is is so fantastic it's it's well worth reading just to, you know because. It's just one issue. Mm-hmm. Just go go grab it on Comixology. You you will not regret it. Yeah. Um. Again, really interesting. I, I almost I'm almost worried all my picks are really boring. Uh, I've got a lot of generic oh. picks. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Um. My number nine is actually Justice, which is a the Alex Ross painted Jim Kruger story. That's kind of this out of continuity, wacky tale, ba- ba- based kind of based on the Silver Age versions of the characters. But it is a big grandiose thing where the the this giant version of the Injustice League kind of plot against all the heroes. Um, but it, every single panel is like a goddamn painting you could put in your wallet. It's like utterly beautiful. I mean, it's the Alex Ross way of doing things. Yeah. And it, it has everything. It's the kitchen sink. You got every like all the Justice League members. You got all the Injustice League members. You get fights with Cheetah, with uh, with with Grodd, with with Brainiacs there. All of it. Like it's it, it's the everything approach. It's this great big grand story. Um, and it's one of those things that I read quite early on in my comic reading period, maybe before I actually read a lot of these people individually. You know, I'd maybe read some Batman and Superman, but I hadn't read a lot mm-hmm. of the other characters yet. Um, and when we, we, we revisited it for the monthly uh, a few months ago, um, and uh, I, I found that magic was still there for me. It was kind of this like aura of, like, here here's the... It's almost like the... Like the... What's the way... What's the, how do I put this? It's almost like the like the footnote story you give to just like say this is what the DC universe is kind of like. It is. It's it's one of those just like a, a hush is the yeah. This is a, an introductory story. It's like yeah. the greatest hits of okay. Here's a bunch of the villains and you know what they can do. It's something you give to someone. It's like okay, you wanna you wanna dip your toes. This is something to whet your appetite. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's big. It's grandiose. It's, it's all these things. Uh, full of big concepts, but in a really sort of classical, like Silver Age superhero sort of way, and I, I, I really like it for that. So, that's my number nine. Uh, what's your number eight, Matt? So my number eight is, as I pull it up, is fifty-two, but more in uh, specifically Booster Gold story in fifty-two, because that's the. Yeah, I mean, that's the story that got me to love Booster Gold, and uh, it spins out into fifty-two pickup, which is another that's where we learn that he's the greatest hero you've never heard of so uh he starts off as a joke and ends up being one of the greatest heroes of all time it's hard not to love uh, i think that one was mostly penned by jeff johns i'm sure other people filled in because it was kind of yeah honestly the, the, they've all been, always been very kind of uh, intentionally KG. vague about what, mm-hmm. what who wrote what parts of 52 yeah. mm-hmm. 
Like it sounds like they did kind of split by character, but it sounds like they all kind of like yeah. mixed you the pie a little bit. You can tell like certain points, you know, it's like okay, that feels like this one. Yeah, well, the scientist yeah. stuff on the island was mostly Morrison, I believe, but mm-hmm. it's it's yeah. hard to kind of gauge what a lot of it is. But um, yeah, Fifty Two is like an epic, like once in a lifetime thing. It is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I never read Pick Up, but Fifty Two itself is is a whole oh. thing that is well worth reading for the experience, if nothing else. This yeah. it is such a an experiment in storytelling to have one giant series you know 52 issues telling yeah. quite a lot of stories at once. It, it did so well that they had an archipelago series after that that both did really badly like, by comparison countdown and trinity which were just kind of yeah. weak by comparison well count yeah countdown and trinity was bad uh but they did the alternating one generation lost and by day and i thought that oh, was yeah, well not the quality yeah, 52 yeah they were they were decent I like, yeah i like brightest but day well enough yeah i never read yeah. international but I, I did like uh or a generation lost, that was called. Um, yeah. Uh, but hey, uh, so what's your number eight? Eight. Connor? Yeah, eight. This is my rebirth representation. Oh god. So it's, it's it's also Wonder Woman, but I, I actually went with Year One. Yeah. Uh, that, that first. Story. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think it's Nicholas Scott's art that puts it over the edge. Diana's discovery yeah, of uh, interacting mm-hmm. with everything for the first time. It's just so good, and, and of course that includes the issue eight of you know. <laughs> Man, someone brought it up before Matt did. Jesus, uh, uh, that's the thing. It's like I, I, I really do love it, and that, you know, I wanted some Wonder Woman representation, but I can't, in good conscience, put it any higher than eight. Yet. That's, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, you, you want time to let it simmer in the history of the comics and kind of really think about it and reread it at some point and all the rest of it. Uh, my number eight is a is a biggie. Uh, Identity Crisis is my number eight. Matt brought it up earlier. In fact. Mm-hmm. Um, arguably my favorite crisis i think and i i think that's yeah? because even though it's not a crisis crisis because it's not you know multiversal oh, it is, though. things yeah but it's a crisis in the traditional yeah. sense of the word maybe not the the, the dc sense of the word but in the, the traditional the, sense most of the word people's use of the word yeah um and i love it because it, it, it deals with again what we said that we're hitting that in justice league recently with this this morality question and this discovery that some of the league members had done this awful thing for for good reasons but you know when Batman and you know Wally discover what they did and they're not happy about it and it, like it becomes this mm. thing and even just the sense that in the opening pages it makes you really care about Ralph Dimney and Sue Dimney and then by the end of the issue you're heartbroken and it's like damn yep. <laughs> like and you know it's the idea of someone killing going around killing superheroes and people related to superheroes um it's just it's a, it's such a such a the question intense of who story. benefits. Yeah. Always rings. Always rings. You get to the end of, I think that was the fifth issue. Yeah. And, and I, I think it was also the first time that they really, I'd really been sold that Deathstroke was a badass because Deathstroke yeah. really takes on the league and kind of survives and wins. Yeah, Meltzer. Um, so, yeah, Mel, yeah Meltzer's great. That. Yeah. He's a yeah. good writer. Absolutely. Uh, what's your number seven, uh, Matt? So, my number seven is from the Jeff Johns run of The Flash. And it's Blitz, which gives us Zoom. Well, my, I'm just going to jump in because my number seven is also a Blitz from the Flash. So, <laughs> uh, I, I, I had a debate with myself if it was going to be Blitz uh, or Rogue War, but yep, I couldn't pick. Yeah, uh, I also like Wonderland. Wonderland's a great because that was his first one, and it's a great introduction. Yeah, to, to but, the Flash. but Blitz is the one that where you're just like, oh, here's my heart. You he ripped it out. Just well, like yeah, because because they think oh, not only does it really get to the, the Zoom stuff, the 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 uh, yeah. the 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 Zolom and the Hunter Zolom and stuff, but. It's the that's 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 the arc where he tries to murder Wally's pregnant wife because he believes that Wally needs a tragedy akin to Barry's to be a better yep. Flash. So you've got this race to try and stop this from happening. It's gut wrenching. It's heartbreaking. It's all these mm-hmm. things, uh, and I think that's ultimately why it's probably the standout arc of the entire thing. Yep. Although honestly, his entire Flash run reads like one big continuous it, story. That because it does because Rogue War yeah. like kind of caps off a lot of this stuff and brings it back. Mm-hmm. So. There's a reason to, to bring that one up as well, but there, there are a few runs in, in history that I like. That like you know, I said I wanted some Wonder Woman representation. Mm. Uh, my my first thought is I, I really love the the Azarello Wonder Woman run from New Fifty Two. I think that is a yeah. fantastic story, but that doesn't even have arcs. It that no. is just one story, and it, so it I felt like I was. When we yeah, get to, so I felt when like we, I was cheating to pick. When we get to honorable mentions, there's a couple of things that I wanted to pick from something, but I said, nah, I kind of love it as a whole run, not necessarily the stories in the, on the, on their own. But nah, so I just jumped in because we might as well talk about it at the same time since it's the same number. Oh, uh, but it has the, the Scott Collins art there too. It's very unnerving because Zoom, yeah. Zoom might be the most unnerving. 
of and, all these villains. And Zoom's about to really pop back up, so we're, he is. it's exciting times. Yeah. Uh, Connor, what's your number seven? My, my number seven is actually uh, Green Arrow Quiver by by Kevin Smith. Hmm. Uh, this is a fan. It's, it's like ten issues. It's so much dialogue. There's like twenty issues worth of dialogue, but it reads so easily. It's so smooth. It's this. This is it's it's really impressive because the, the the whole idea is okay. So Oliver Queen is back from the dead, but he doesn't realize that he's been dead. He just kind of is is there, right? And it's he he has no memory of the last few years of before he died as well. So he has no memory of certain events that he did. You know, or like and. So it's really delving into the okay, who is Oliver Queen at his core? What, what's his what is his identity? And it's a really uh, unique way of, of bringing someone back from the dead. Uh, and it's got lots and lots of snappy dialogue, which could be a complaint for some. I know that is the is the most yeah. common complaint for it, but it reads so well. It's it's a joy to read. It also made Catman a joke. So then, Gail Simone went, "Oh, you think Catman's a joke? <laughs> yeah, was that yeah, this yeah. one? Yeah, yeah. yeah." And oh, you think he's a joke here? I want to make him super cool. Yeah. 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 Also introduced uh, introduced Mia, so you know, yeah, a bit a, a big element there going on. Hmm. Cool. Uh, Matt, we're back around to you because we're already talking about. So, so yeah, we're back around to me. Mine, mine also is a Green Arrow. Uh, number six. Uh, this is. So yeah, number six. Yeah, yeah. So following up Connors, uh, I had a struggle here because I wanted Green Arrow to be represented, mm-hmm. and I was like, did I do I go with Lemire and do the Outsider War? That really just hit with Sword and Art, yeah. but. The one story that really made me like Green Arrow was Green Arrow Year One by Andy Diggle and Jock. Um, it's just it's a fantastic telling of of Oliver Queen's origin, and it really hits the broad strokes of why he's a terrible person until he gets to the island, and then how the island changes him for the better. And I, you could tell that it informed a lot of Arrow. Just they stopped at the good stuff and then kept going and doing bad things. So, <laughs> you know, I got really excited for that because of my love for this one. And yeah, yeah John's part too. Oh, yeah, that's, that's great. It's funny, actually, I don't have a Green Arrow thing on my, my list. I actually, the one that was sort of close to maybe making it that I considered was not one that's been mentioned. I'll save it though for when we're doing honorable mentions. Yep. Uh, but, no, uh, my, uh, so actually, Connor's number six, actually. Connor, what's yeah, your yes. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 Matt might, you know, punch me for this being slightly too low. <laughs> but this is uh, Superman Birthright. Ooh. I'm coming for you right now. <laughs> Which is, uh, in my opinion, the best of the origin stories. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, lots of them. Yeah, uh, and a pool of really good, good. Yeah, and a pool of really good origin stories for Superman. Yeah, there's a this, lot. Of this them. one still manages to stand out above. Mark Wade understands Superman. That's he does, just it. Uh, you know, and of course, you you even had the you know, that that speech that was in the the Man of Steel trailer. Uh, you yeah. know, it, is from this. Which is all they take from it, so you know. yeah, I know. But I, I remember when that came out, and they, they promised like, "Oh, that's the that's part of the inspiration yeah. for for that movie," and you get excited. Yep. <sighs> I mean, never mind about, it. but you know, but the, this is yeah, where where it is there, and it's just it understands not just Superman but Clark Kent, and you know this this journey of discovery of of who he is and who he's going to be. Yeah, he's not even Superman in it until like Quite issue late. four. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, it's just it, it's it is like it, it's this self-reflective journey of who he is and who he wants to be in the future and how he's going to do that and it's just fantastic yeah well i'm sure there'll be more to come I'm, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sure it'll come uh, again so my number six is uh batman the long halloween uh yeah, Jeff figured it would show up at some point yeah, yeah that, this is like you know this is you know i, I kind of it's not really year two because all the villains have been introduced but mm-hmm. it does kind of feel like when i hand people books and say oh, i want to get a batman comics like, okay, year one start with that and then go to long halloween and dark victory and long halloween is this you know is this murder mystery it, it, uh, it's it's perfectly timed as well because you know comics come out once a month every issue is set on a different holiday that happens to, to coincide uh, with that month yeah it's so good. You get so many villains in it. You have building up of various characters, the Falcones, the you know Harvey Dent. Of course, this is really like the the best version of his origin as Two Face. That is that mm-hmm. story. Uh, Dark Knight took a lot from it for you know their Harvey Dent. Um, great, great stuff. Um, 
and it's this tragedy of like trying to like him, him like, trying to change the city and then Gotham corrupting him and the idea and the, the core of the story as well me and Connor talked about this when we did it in the monthly is yep. uh, the idea that this is the, the old Gotham to still try to survive as the new villains of Gotham so the mob bosses and stuff are trying to yep. like stick around and be relevant but it's the crazy jokers and your scarecrows and your poison ivies and your cobble pots mm-hmm. it's the wacky larger than life villains that are taking over yep. It's that transition. It's, it's, it's looking at all these these the flashy new kids on the block and how yeah. they're they're overtaking mm-hmm. the the old traditional parents essentially. And, and they and, try and, to maintain the, the, the hold, struggle for relevance. And it just goes down in flames. And yeah. Harvey Dent also becomes one of these characters, and it's just the whole yeah. thing's fantastic. So uh, that's your that's Long Halloween, sorry. Uh, and Dark Victory is yeah. also fantastic. It's a fantastic sequel. That interests yeah. you. I still, I still have to read that one. Yeah. Long, Long Halloween was one I put off for a while, and it was in danger of being overhyped. But it's not because, mm. no. you know, I, I actually took my time reading that one. I didn't want to work uh, through it. Yeah, Dark, Dark Victory is also fantastic. And I'd argue that Long Halloween is the better book overall. But I think Dark Victory may actually have the better murder mystery element. So, yeah. uh, there to go. What's your number five, Matt? So my number five is a crisis, but it's infinite. Uh, this was, I'm a continuity wonk, wonk, and it's because of this book. This is the one that made me go back and realize that Jeff Johns just loves pulling on threads and then telling stories about that one thread and then stitching back that sweater. So it had everything uh, from Golden Age Superman and Superboy Prime. It gave us one of the best villains there because it's not that he's powerful. It's that he's a whiny little brat, and that's why you want to strangle him. Uh, and it also gave us the death of, of one of my favorites, of, of Connor Kent. Uh, and Who? I totally did not cry there at the end of that of at not. all. No, so uh, you're, you're a man. Also, you wouldn't do that. No. Can't cry for something and, that never existed. Yeah, true. But it's just a great story and on how it deals with continuity, and it gave us basically what we have now going forward with the Fifty Two Earths and the you know mm. the Green Lantern stuff going forward. You know, it was a nice jumping off point for all of that. Yeah. Uh, Carl, number number five. Yeah, my, my number five is is also the the Long Halloween. So you know, oh, there you go. <laughs> doing that. I, I, the other thing you didn't mention really is is Loeb's art is incredible, and you know the the way he draws the eye in has a the flow to his pages is just something spectacular. Oh, absolutely. I, I think it's, he's not an artist who had worked on a lot of regular books, but for his own like individual thing that's separate. Yeah, with, with his style to shine, he's, as he's where he also excels. draws one of the best capes ever. Yes, he does. There are very few people who can rival uh, Batman's cape drawn by Loeb. Hmm. Cool. Uh, My number five is Superman Brainiac by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. Um, You know, when I was like, I I need some Superman representation. What's my favorite? You know, what's my Superman story? I'm looking through them and I'm like, "Ah, what really struck a chord? Like, I mean, obviously, it was was all the origins, but I almost ruled out the origin stories because I'm like, I kind of like all of them. They're all good and like. Yeah, I may have a favourite between them, but they all kind of like jumble in my mind together. You've got, you got For All Seasons along with Birthright, and then you've also got Secret Origin. I like them all. Um, mm-hmm. And I thought, I love Brainiac. I love what it does to Brainiac himself, makes him intimidating. I mean, the fact that the Krypton show is like taking these look, you know, verbatim from that, that series. Yeah. Uh, just the feeling of this build-up, uh, obviously the tragedy in that story, because that's, you know... In the comics, at least post-crisis, Superman's father, uh, Jonathan, didn't die young. Uh, he, yeah. he was still around for a long time and this was the story of him actually passing away uh, in present day at the time so uh, all that great stuff uh, obviously Gary Frank great art love it it's, um, no, it's, it's fantastic yeah. although it, it says a lot but it's not even my favourite part of, of that run That's right. yeah. I, you'll be happy to know Connor that I actually bought that entire run in the Superman sale oh, did uh, you? Good job. Because Finally. and I bought it in singles because I already had uh, Last Sun in singles, and there's a couple of issues that are missed from the trade. So I thought, you know what? I'll just buy yeah. it on singles. I'll just buy the whole thing in singles. And there okay. you go. So uh, I'll be reading Superman: Legion of Superheroes at some point, uh, and they're not too distant future, I imagine. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted to go back and buy the, crypt- the new Krypton trade as well, just so I can keep going. But I'm reading why not? through that run. Yeah, why not? So hey. Uh, that's, that's my number five. Uh, Matt, what's your number four? So so this, proving that my list is a living creature, it's changed just since we started. <laughs> uh, I, I I swapped out the Batman stories because this is where my Batman to, entry to, comes To be in. fair, I sometimes yeah. do this as well when we do lists. I'm like, uh, uh, but you can change, as long as it's above what you're up to, you can still yep. change it. Yeah, so, you know, my well, my top three wasn't going to be touched. You know, those are, those are, but... 
uh, I had to put a Batman entry on. We all know my my mm-hmm. history with Batman, right? And I had Resurrection of Ra's al Ghul, uh, which is my favorite of the Morrison stuff. That's such a Joe. You know I feel that's such a unique. Pick. I feel no one ever picks that as a favorite. But go on. Yeah, it's well, it's globe trotting. It's you know that they go all around. It was a true crossover that crossed over to the four main Batman books at the time. You know, so it wasn't just Batman. But yeah, it, it's a weird one. I like it, but. There's one Batman story that's affected me to this day, and I always bring it up when I talk about favorite Batman stories, but it's called Absolute Terror, and it's basically the inmates at Arkham tell Scarecrow that you're nothing without your fear gas. Like, yeah, you say you understand fear, but you use the gas, so you're just as gimmicky as any of these other guys. So he breaks out and essentially becomes a terrorist, starts killing random people all over Gotham, and... Because they're used to the gimmicks of the Joker and Two Face, they're not used to this randomization of it, and he ends up being able to hold the city in the palm of his hands. And Batman can't do anything about it because Batman's so used to fighting the gimmicks and these big shows that he has a hard time finding this one. I love man. how even for his Batman pick, he somehow goes, obscure, he goes he? deep cut so that we don't know what it is. Is it was this like a run in the regular issues? Was this a? It, yeah, I I want to say all I can find is called Absolute Terror. I want, I want to say it was in Detective Comics, but it okay. could have been, in, you know, Adventures of Batman, whatever one of the smaller books. Uh, I remember it coming around around the time that Dini was doing Detective. I so, just looked, uh, Detective 835 and 836. Oh, that's a par. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And who, who wrote this one? Since you haven't looked up. Uh, hang on. Let me just find yep. that. Uh, right, uh, John Rosen. Okay. I love so that Matt's, Matt's making picks where he doesn't even know who the writer was yeah. off the top of his head. Uh, uh, <laughs> it just it had affected me because it was this, you know, what if... It sounds interesting after it. It does. So, I, it's something that I'm definitely going to check out at some point now. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not familiar with this. This has obviously not gone down in the, the greats. You know, it's not particularly no. remembered. It was a nice little two, you know... I want to say it maybe it came out post one year later. We just got off of the Great White story that wasn't that great and yeah. this came out. August 07, this one. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. cool. Uh, Carl, what's your number five? Or four? We're on four. Four. Hang on, let me get back to my list. Uh, oh, so my number four is one that has already been mentioned. This is Green Arrow Year One. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty much everything. Yeah, Matt was talking about. It's so tight as its story. It's it's like okay, no, this this is how you do an origin. Uh, I'm a sucker for good origins. What can I say? This, this is my third year one on here. That is. I, I, I love them. Uh, but <laughs> you know, this is just—it's so different to, to other year ones. I think it, it does its own thing. It's like, I don't know, okay, you, you're familiar with the story of Oliver Queen, but let's shake it up. Mm. It gives it a hard edge and does the the gritty thing without yeah. it feeling cheap and just you know, for the sake of it. It feels uh, this is exactly what should happen to a shipwreck survivor. You know, okay, you know, this is this is where you go down those routes. The, the way that he makes the bow with just refuse from, yeah. from the shipwreck and, uh, you know, plus China White is a villain in the syndicate. No, of and, and, you know, it's, it's something long-time listeners of this will be familiar. We, we went and had an in-depth discussion on that one week five a long time ago. I think, yeah. I think Matt missed that week, actually, though. I did miss yeah, that week. he was gone, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's great stuff. So my number four is Batgirl Year One, which uh, Connor kind of brought up tangentially earlier on. Um, uh, I love that. This is, this is the Barbara Gordon or- origin. This is her fighting goofy villains. It's very bright and pulpy. Uh, it's got the whole idea that she's like forcing this and doing it herself against Batman's will, and Batman tries to talk her out of it, all that stuff. I love it. Um, and she fights great villains such as the Condiment King, uh, ba- basically the Kite Man of yesteryear, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Quiltman might have been one of the ones in there as well. Like just a lot of stuff like that, and it was very much her makeshift. I'm doing this on my own because I want to, and then kind of Batman having to accept that he can't stop her, and then because he accepts or chooses to reveal who he is to her, and uh, you know even just the fun stuff with Dick having a crush on her and everything else. Uh, it, it, it is great. Delightful. This is, this is probably the, light, the the most light-hearted on my top ten, but it just it it it, it fits into that so perfectly. And it's so fun. Um, that it just It's one of those it things is. where... This was out of print, because this was back when I was still buying physical, and I happened mm-hmm. to find a trade of it, and I was like so you know ecstatic about it, because, oh man, this was like... Because ordering it online was like, you know, ten times a the pain. cover price. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So I found it for like, you know, cover price in a, in a store, and I was like, oh man, yes, and I, you know, I immediately read it, and 
um, it lived up. Because it, it's worth mentioning, people were probably thinking there was going to be some Stephanie Brown on here, and there isn't, because yeah. I, I looked at her run and went, is there like one story in there that I want to pick out? You know, yeah, there was one, uh, I was going to put an honourable mentions, but it was going to be where she babysits Damien. The Damien, yeah, that was, that's an obvious one, but I was looking yeah. at the arcs and I was like, is there one specifically that stands out, or is it just the run as a whole? And it was the run as a whole, and I think Batgirl Year One is the Batgirl story that sort of stands as a sort of standalone thing. Oh, um, no, I, I agree. Like even the fact that you know it, it was either or with that mm. Robin for me at number ten, even being at number ten, or you know, so it's essentially eleven is you know yeah. really high praise. So no, I feel, feel, fully recommend checking out Batgirl Year One uh, by Chuck Dixon. Uh, so Matt, what's your number three? So my number three is my entry from Legion of Superheroes here, but it's not a Legion story. It's a Justice League of America and JSA crossover called The Lightning Saga. And not just for the reasons that, you know, it reintroduced the Legion of Superheroes proper to the DCU, uh, which had been wiped out from Burns Man of Steel, where they had never existed. But it also gave us the return of Wally West, who had been, you know, missing for a year. Like, it doesn't seem like a big deal now, after we were missing him for a long time. <laughs> But uh, basically the story surrounds it is the Justice League of America, just society get together, start pulling at these threads of who this new Starman is. And it involves the just or the Legion of Superheroes being lost in time. And, you know, uh, they end up activating these lightning rods. Wally comes back. They defeat the bad guys. But I'll never forget where I was and the circumstances when I read that issue where he comes back. And for that reason, it's my number three. Cool. Yeah, you know, it's fine. I've, I've not read all of, uh, the GSA run yet. I, I and yeah. I love what I have read of it so far. I assume yeah. when I do finish it and when it's all said and done, there probably yeah. will be stories in there that I would pick for this. Yes. Uh, well, this this was both of the relaunch of that came after Infinite Crisis. Mm. So uh, Melter was writing Justice League of America. Johns was writing Justice Society, and so the fact that they put basically this was a back door to his action run because that's what yeah. it ended up. Leading to, uh, so. it's uh, it's, uh, it's really hard for me. I, I haven't got a JSA story as much as I love. It's it's one of my all time favorite runs, but it's yep. just I don't know where to choose an arc for it. Yep. Yeah. So, mm. you know, uh, which number three, Connor? Uh, my number three is Lex Luthor, Man of Steel, sometimes called just Luthor now, I believe. Yeah. Uh, this is the the Brian Azzarello and Libra Mayo. Oh yeah, I, I know that just as Luthor. Yeah, I've never heard it called. That yeah, yeah it was, originally it was Lex Luthor, Man of Steel. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, but uh, this is you know this is a a Lex story as as the the name suggests, yep. and this is the what, insight, of... Matt. That's that's why we have him in the show for that insight. Look, screw but you. He's he's portrayed as a superhero in this one. He is. He this is... is this is Lex Luthor is the, the hero of his own story. Yeah, uh, this is one of the the defining stories for Lex, and it's you know one of those reasons why he is in my my favorite villains of all time. Not not just comics or DC, just in general. Yeah. It's it's the way he is he is so human, the way he fights for for what he thinks is right, and you know, it's all of his viewpoints are so twisted that they make sense in his own head. Everything in this book makes yeah. sense when you're reading it. You're kind of on mm. his side, even though you know you shouldn't be. Yeah, yep. Lex Luthor is better than Darth Vader. I agree with that statement. Well, Lex, you know, what they do cool with this story is Superman is just, he's shown as a presence. You yeah. never actually get to know the man mm. of it because yeah. it's just from Luther's perception. And he's this threat that just hovers outside the window. And it's, yeah, it's really good. It's on the to read list. I'll get to it some point. I don't know why I haven't read it. Yeah, if, if you read, uh, obviously. Uh, I read Joker. Joker yeah. yeah, I've read Joker. Yeah. I never See, got that's what I either. haven't read, but I have read Joker. Uh, because. Uh, obviously now they're often collected together, but when I had the like, guy, I just had the Joker hardcover back. Yeah, back I, when. I, I've got the, I have the Joker hardcover, and then I have Luther on Comicsology. We're going to get a because yeah, they, they put them together for the absolute. Yeah. Um, but no, it sounds great. Uh, I don't know why I've still not got around to it. It's the sort of thing where maybe. It's not in the Superman sale, unfortunately, but you know maybe next time it's on sale, I'll probably grab it because uh, because mm. that's what I need more backlog. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's just an ever growing list. Yeah, it, it really is. Uh, but hey, that's good. Um, so uh, my number three, uh, we're going back to Batman, uh, but it's a different kind of Batman because this is Batman: The Black Mirror by Scott Snyder, uh, which still, for my money, is Scott Snyder's best Batman story. Uh, this is this is yeah. Dick Grayson as Batman. This is James Gordon Jr., uh, who is a serial killer, coming back. 
It is a full-on horror serial killer Batman comic, and it is gorgeous. Uh, it's just stunning. Yeah. It, no, it really is. It's uh, fantastic. You've got you know, uh, a jock on, on the eye. You've got yeah. Frank Avila in there as well at points. And... The, it's it's the, the scenes of like James Gordon coming after his sister, who, remember, at this time is Oracle and is in the wheelchair. Uh, there, there is one moment mm-hmm. that will never leave my mind. Yeah, it's, it is absolutely fantastic. And uh, He's done a lot of good stuff, of course. I've had some criticisms of his later stuff, but... As good as maybe Court of Owls and uh, Death of the Family, you know, are as good as maybe some of the other stuff are. This is still my favorite Scott Snyder story, bar none. That's mm-hmm. fair. I I go back and forth between that and Court of Owls. Court of Owls, I, I love what it did with the mythology uh, for, for Batman and and really expanded out. Whereas you know, yeah, Black Mirror is a much more personal story, and the, the yep. horror of it is just fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. So, uh, if, if you look behind me, it's the one Batman thing I have. And that's and true. I can see it. I can see it over uh, something there. Uh, yeah. Now, what's your number two? So, my number two might come as a surprise because it's not number one, but it's Birthright by Mark Wade, uh, Lionel Francis. You. It's one of my favorite Superman stories. It's definitely my favorite origin. What you know, Connor was hinting at. Uh, but it has one of my favorite Superman moments where he's deciding to become Superman, and Pa Kent. Is just like, no, I, you can't do this. And so they end up having a heart-to-heart. It's like, no, I'll see, you'll always be my little boy. Like, no matter what powers you have, no matter what you do, good you do in this world, you are still the, the little guy that I found in the cornfield, and I don't want anything to happen to you. And it's like the realest moment, you know, that I've ever seen Pa Kent have. So when we get a moment in Man of Steel, and it's the complete and total opposite... The, the worst it's part of that is it, it, it tries to play the same moment, but misses yep. the mark entirely. Exactly. So, and it just, again, shows that Wade understands Superman on a completely different level. Because uh, you know, it I, is a Clark Kent story. I almost want to jump and say, hey, hey let's not just jump back to the, the well of making fun of Snyder's Superman. But then again, would it be an episode of this show? Would we not be celebrating the history of this podcast without making a dig at Zack Snyder's Superman? Or me saying that Star Wars is shit? I mean, I don't know. Like they're, they're, Those things are just... They're, they're, yeah, or, or or just the fact that there was that time you forgot who Starfire was. Yeah. Worth mentioning. It's worth mentioning this one last time. Sure, that's episode one hundred. Oh, back. one last time. I make no promises no. about that. Uh, every time we talk about Odyssey, I'm going to bring it up. I'm just warning you. So, you know what, Matt? Oh. I, was, I was willing to retire all the Connor Kent jokes. I was willing to you know, part of a new you era, a, a fresh start, if you will. Uh, starting with 101. Look, all I'm saying is, you know, earlier how you know, Matt was saying, you know, Sejic totally listens to this. So, you know, the, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the cruise and, and, and Starfire stuff is just for us. <laughs> yep. There's definitely, he's gone, you know what, I should, I should pass it along. Let's, let's get a joke in there about you know, someone not recognizing it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll know for sure if that's what happens. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, Joe. It's funny about that yeah. though. Is there could be something by accident where someone just says who's that because they don't know who it is anyway. It's like they've never met I'm her. I'm taking that as confirmation. Uh, yeah, sure. Confirmation uh, yeah, I, bias like, is what that's called. Full on uh, confirmation anyways, bias. I'm taking it anyway. Yeah. Anyways, also from birthright, we got that the S stands for hope, yeah. and that that's something that has endured since. Yeah. And yeah. Even on the Supergirl TV show that that came up yeah. it means hope. Uh, that's probably it, probably its its biggest legacy because obviously mm. it's not. Continuity that version anymore. No, uh, it's John's it's Secret Origin, right? Uh, sort of, sort you know, of. It's you know. weird because New Fifty Two kind of murkied it all we've, up. But... We've got something at the minute. Yeah, but, you know the, the 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 S for Hope is the legacy of that book essentially. Yep, for sure. Carl, Car, what's your number two? Uh, my number two is okay. So you know, one last Batman story on here. Mm-hmm. This is Arkham Asylum series House on series Earth. This is a beautifully drawn painted horror going through the through Arkham Asylum with the, the villains and this this journey through the psyche of, of these people and it's so you know it, it is genuinely it's it's a full it's a horror story this this book the the way it treats these you know, they're 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 almost sympathetic in like they're they're so messed up that you kind of feel bad for them with yeah you know, they're they're the obsessive with their their gimmicks they're they're not just gimmicks they're compulsions they are you know genuinely mentally unstable why they're in arkham asylum and it, it just has this amazing surreal quality with the art that, that just sells it all mm-hmm. all right my number two is blackest night um Oh, look at that. Yeah, I know. I, it was funny because I'm looking at the Green Lantern, you know, something probably. Like, Blackest Night is probably my favorite event 
uh, right now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it could be topped I, I, if we count Doomsday Clock. You know, I mean, I don't know if you would, but if you do, yeah. maybe that will be the end of it. Yeah, all. I think it's worth noting. I didn't even consider something like Watchmen for this. Joe, you know, I thought about it because uh, I was like, well, technically, Doomsday Clock kind of makes it more entwined with the DCU, but it was never originally a DC story, and I, did, I left. I just decided to not include it for that reason. Uh, yeah, same as as much as it's oh, yeah, it's a DC book, and yeah, it's kind of being played with at the minute. I thought. No, it's too easy. Hmm. Um, but, no, so Blackest Night, uh, it was the culmination of so much of everything Johns was building up in Green Lantern. Um, it played with uh, all the different core colours and uh, uh, probably at its best before it started to feel like it had been overused. Mm-hmm. Um, it was uplifting. It was it was like a good horror comic in parts. It really felt yeah. like it was affecting everyone. Um, it dealt with the fact that se- several characters were believed to be dead at the time. You know, yeah. it was steeped in this weird thing where both Barry and Hal had come back by this point, and they were both kind of like talking yeah. about it. There was all these elements to it, uh, gorgeous art as well uh, throughout. So, um, no, Black- Blackest Night, to, as of now, is my favorite <clears throat> uh, event uh, until until taken down by something else should it happen. But no, uh, what's your number one, Matt? So my number one is a story that was written by Alan Moore with art by Dave Gibbons. Yeah, That's so it was troll. weird that you guys brought up Watchmen. Well, yeah, but uh, also came out in 1985. That's weird. Uh, now this is Superman for the man who has everything from the Superman annual number one. <clears throat> and choked up just talking about it, but no, this is the Black Mercy. You know, the Re- relevant kind of this week. From. Yeah, relevant. It yeah. is. That's why I started laughing maniacally when I got to that in in Batman. <laughs> But, so, just the, the way that it works with the Superman on Krypton and his family and him realizing that this is all has to go away and the final goodbye to his son and ultimately the Mongol burn is just so good. <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> he's actually getting choked up. He's crying. He's crying on the show. He is. Oh. <coughs> and he's unmuted himself. He thought he muted himself and then he unmuted himself. <laughs> Oh he's man, cr- he's crying. Oh man, no, no. Hey, I'm not. <laughs> hey, that's what's in my throat. Man, we a violin here for this. Matt, Matt is yeah, getting emotional. Hundredth and last, if my body has anything to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Watch as they, <laughs> watch as they laugh as I'm choking to death. This is great. Joy, Joy is really funny. I, I, I've got some music on the background. I think it's, it's a, it's a. Thomas Newman piece, I think, that's going oh, on at the minute. Sad so piano it's music. really just a sad piano oh. and strings playing as Matt's telling this story and <laughs> choking it up. It's, it's just right, oh, it's right, making the moment. Go. I think I got it. I think I got it. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, Mongol Burn. That's one of my favorite Superman moments of all time. Because he's supposed to be better than that, but this man just took an entire life away, and you know, all for nothing. And then also we get the the end where. Wonder Woman, Batman, and Robin show up to the cave and celebrate Superman's birthday. And eh, I figured for the hundredth, th- this and Birthright go back and forth, one and two. But the fact that it was just Superman's birthday, you know, and then what happened in Batman? I have to put it number one. Cool, Connor, what's your number one? So my number one is Superman and the Legion of Superheroes. Oh, look at you! I I love this story. I this think is. That's most- I've ever said about you now. <laughs> no, You'll regret don't. that later, Matt. Yeah, yeah. I said yeah. most, not all. <laughs> most. This this is the the story that made me fall in love with Superman as as a character, and you know, the the one that's like, okay, why Superman is is relevant? It is not just okay, boring, overpowered. So, this is you know, the the Legion come and pick up Superman, take him to the future. There's a you know crisis going on. They, they need his help, but they get there, and there's a, there's a red sun. He's got no he's got no powers. And they they're all worried about him. They're trying to protect him, but he steps up anyway. He be he, he he is the leader. He inspires regardless of you know whether his guy's powers or not. And he proves you know why he's Superman because he's Clark Kent, not just because of the powers. And, and don't forget the fact that there's someone that's perverting his legacy. Yeah, called Earth Man, and he's trying to throw all the other you know people from different planets off of Earth. And that's what Superman would do. And it's like, well, we're not wait. You don't understand his where he came yeah, it, from. Yeah, it's it's the the whole idea that, that he is you know the ultimate immigrant, 
Yep. And it, it just perverts that and then completely misses the idea of what Superman is supposed to be. Yeah, Earth, Earthman's a fantastic villain there. Yeah. It is, uh, you know, it's a wonderful story, and I, I can't recommend it enough. So, uh, two uplifting Superman stories from you two for your number ones. I, I, I kind of already know what Pete's number one is, and I feel like it's been mentioned. It has been mentioned. It is yeah. Batman Arkham Asylum, A Serious House on a Serious Earth. It is a deranged trip through madness, and I think partly why this is my favorite is because this is like, uh, cause, you know, when I read this, you know, early in my comic reading days, I'd read Year One and maybe read Dark Knight Returns, maybe Long Halloween at this point, maybe a couple other things, and a couple other like maybe Superman books. This was the one that came along and said, "Hey, comics don't have to be what you think they are. They can be something else, and they can be." Yeah artistic and they can be evoke emotions you didn't think a comic book could evoke that this is the the main trip david lynch batman story that is like a complete horror show Uh, oh no you you should still read it you should still read that uh it's beautiful it's it's horrifically beautiful the the way the joker looks in those early pages uh with this you know skewed perspective of his face like all of it is is Dave McKean's art is like absolutely gobsmacking. It's phenomenal, like, isn't it? And you know, I, I cut short a little bit what I was talking because I was like, I could see you looking. I'm like, that's his number one. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, and it, take the spotlight. And it's it's just it's it's, it's beautifully done. It, it is this dark, deranged thing. Um, it, you know, some of the stuff from the video game Arkham Myself, which is not based on this, does take a little bit though that the, the history of Arkham and the idea of like, yeah. the owners of the house and the history of that. Um, you know, it's a graphic novel. It was like one big long issue. It wasn't like any more than that. And but even despite the darkness, even despite all these things, and you know how dark it opens with like Joker, like you know stabbing a nurse in the eye with a pencil over the phone, uh, and they, they, they've taken over the asylum. They just want Batman to go in because he belongs in there with them. There's something about that that just speaks to me. But even despite all that darkness, there is just a, there's a glimmer of hope by the ending. There's just this hopeful moment where someone maybe becomes better again, and it's hope that maybe we aren't all screwed forever. That we can get out of the maze, the dark, dark maze. Uh, it's fantastic, and it's funny because I think Grant Morrison's someone with me who can be a little bit hit and miss at times because sometimes mm-hmm. his wacky ideas get a bit the better of him for me. Um, that said, I, th- I think he's an acquired taste where I'm, I'm gr- growing more for him than I'm not as time goes on. But this was one before I even knew who Grant Morrison was. This nailed it. This yeah. was just 10 out of 10. John, the, the moment for me that I'll never forget is is the, the introduction to Two-Face. Mm. That is just... The way it plays with Two Face's obsession mythology is something I've never seen done before, and it it truly makes him, you know, because you know people have made Harvey Dent sympathetic, mm-hmm. but the way this makes Two Face sympathetic, like this makes me feel sorry for Two Face. Yeah, so it's, it's just very sad and tragic, all of it. So yeah, uh, that, that's my number one. Um, it's worth mentioning. We're going to mention some honorable mentions. Um, I did yeah. like toy with uh, something from Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin, and I, I was going to go with the first arc, Batman Reborn, because that's the one that introduces yeah. Professor Pig, and I love that story. So uh, yeah. I had that. Kingdom Come was on the short list. Uh, I mentioned having mm-hmm. a Green Arrow sto- uh, story that almost made it. That was the Longbow Hunters, which was the start of Mike Brill. Figured, I, only, figures much. I only just read that recently, but that is so goddamn <laughs> gritty, like seedy streets of Seattle. I, 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 I'm I really that. looking forward to getting to that at some point. Uh, I really like that. That, 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 that has that gritty kind of 80s crime feel mm. to it. It's just really good. Uh, obviously, it risks being a little bit too close to Batman in some ways, I, I suppose, with the grittiness, but it does two completely different things. It introduces Shadow, it introduces all these other things, and uh, mm. it spirals all out of that. That's really good. Who? Shadow! There you go. Uh, I didn't recognise it, Tom. Uh, yeah. So, no, nah, so uh, I had that. I had a bunch of other stuff. You know, I was looking. Uh, for in terms of recent stuff that I was thinking about, I, you know, I'd considered Supergirl being super because I really loved that story. Yeah. Um, and I was looking at more Superman stories, more Batman stories, more Flash, more Green Lantern, um, yeah. all the, all the various usual suspects, stuff like JSA, uh, and so on. Well, any other stuff that came close for you guys that you want yeah, to mention? Yeah, I mean, I, I brought them up as we've been going. Yeah. But, you know, stuff like the the Stephanie Brown Batgirl where she babysits. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Damien. Uh, I had the three boot uh, first arc called Teenage Revolution for Legion of Superheroes. Um, the Outsiders War from Jeff Lemire. Yeah. One Woman Eight, which I specifically didn't put on because I didn't need it to be a joke as we kept going. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Uh, um, that's fair. But yeah. Uh, and then uh, Gotham Central, the first 
uh, trade. I can't remember. Oh, uh, Gotham Central. Oh, uh, if I was picking something from that, it'd probably be the Joker story because the Joker's a madman. Yeah, yeah, that's in the second book because that is like yeah. full on. How do regular cops deal with the Joker? With like yeah. a, that's a fascinating thing to explore. Uh, mm-hmm. Really good stuff. Uh, Teen, Teen Titans. I couldn't find the the reason Teen Titans didn't make my list. I couldn't find a an arc. It's kind of like what you were talking about with with Flash. Is mm. it all kind of blends into each other we, and they all build. Another. Yeah, and I've only read the first uh, thick trade of John yeah. Justin Titans one, so I, I really couldn't pick anything from that yeah, yet. Yeah. But uh, no, so it's all on the radar, uh, constantly filling in that, those backstories and histories of yep. various runs that I've not read yet. Uh, but all, all good stuff. Uh, Secret Identity for Superman was another one that I'd, yep. I'd strongly considered. It was close to making it. Yeah, no. Um, I, well, I got, I got a couple that, you know, I mentioned a few as we've gone through, like, you know, Batgirl Year One, uh, Black yeah. Mirror. But, um, you know, I never mentioned, you know, I, I didn't have a, a Green Lantern story, especially from John's, you know, I think mm. both of you did. Yep. And, um, but the one I had on my shortlist was a, a different one to the ones you guys mentioned. I, the one I had on my shortlist was uh, the Sinestro Cold War. Yeah, that, that that's was neck and where neck. it really kicked off and expanded out. And I was like, okay, mm. that's what this is. And yeah. that's the one that made me connect to the run. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the fact that it in, well, no, it was right before that one where it ends with the Zamorans hinting that they have their own core yeah. now. Like and that that leads into the Sinestro Core War and that's dangling yeah. there. So, yeah, uh, no, I, I just love the the way that that really expanded and you know that that's where we established the the Green Lantern mythos that we we have now. That yeah, yeah it, it's, it all came from that arc essentially. That um, was, was a big deal. Um, yeah, the, the the other thing I wanted to mention is I, I couldn't pick an arc, but Grant Morrison's run on Animal Man is something else entirely. It's it's. It's mostly like reasonable superheroics, uh, but mm. as a, but with him as the the family man as well. You know, I've not read it, but I have read Lemire's Animal Man, and I like yeah. that a lot. Very good so. as well. Yeah. yeah. But then towards the end, it goes batshit Morrison. Of course. It and does. <laughs> you have Morrison. Yeah, Morrison appears in yeah. the comic. Yeah, talking to to Animal Man, and it's it's all kinds of crazy. But it's so good, and it works in context. Yeah. Actually, another thing I'd consider was a, a story from a. Uh, Moore's uh, Swamp Thing because uh, that is fantastic mm. but I've not finished it yet and I, it was kind of all blurring together I was like no, I can't be specific and say mm. what, what what part I want so I, I left it but let it be known that it was it was good enough in my memory that I was like oh maybe something from that would make the list if I go back and reread yeah. it and finish it all uh, it's great stuff because that Swamp Thing is a proper tragic you know figure that, that I, I really get into and Floronic Man and uh, RK and all that stuff it's good, good stuff uh, so so no, uh, so that, that's the top tens, uh, our top ten stories, and this is exactly the sort of thing that in a few years' time it'd be worth doing this again because by that point we'll have read a lot more stuff in the past, we'll have read a lot more stuff from Rebirth and yeah, all yeah. the new comics for for, for two hundred, eh? Basically, yeah, we could just mm-hmm. do it again for two hundred. Yeah, that's, that's possible. Um, but yeah, it's worth mentioning. Worth mentioning actually. Uh, like, I mean, this is pie in the sky, but. Uh, we added a bunch of more, uh, Patreon goals uh, over at patreon.com slash TV, where David, of course, uh, d- uh, donates for, for the Connors Corner mm-hmm. every month. How can I forget? Uh, we had a, a bunch of little goals, just silly ones, one-time things. Like uh, I think if we hit 150, me and Connor are going to do a Nova Bowl review for On and In Flux, or movie review show. Uh, so there's a lot of silly ones like that, and one of the ones we're talking about adding for one of the, the higher-up numbers is uh, uh, we did top 10 characters for the 52nd episode. We'll actually do a dedicated like top 50 uh if we hit a certain goal, uh, something like 750 or something like that. Um, so it's just one of those things where, like, yeah, yeah there's some comics related things in those goals as well, uh, even if they are just one time kind of specials mm-hmm. uh, for down the line sometime. Uh, so that's fun. And the other thing, of course, I mentioned this in the Action Comics thing. I promised I'd have a name, but I forgot to think about it uh, <laughs> before we got to this. I've been too preoccupied with actually doing my top 10. Uh, but the other thing we're adding is uh, a sort of wish list for monthly episodes for the trades where patrons can submit mm-hmm. uh, titles that they want us to do. Uh, I will say that if you if you pick something from a run, I'll probably change it to the first part of the run because I'd rather yeah. work through the run in order. Uh, but that, that'll be something we'll be adding over the next couple of days. Uh, is a spe- just an extra little thing for our $5 patrons to do. Uh, but no, uh, look, look forward to the monthly episode for me and Connor. Um, and I guess we're wrapping up the show. I yep. guess it's just worth saying thank you for supporting us for 100 episodes, mm-hmm. for everyone who's been around, uh, whether it's on YouTube for the video version, whether it's the audio version on the podcast feeds and whatnot. Um, through you know DC Universe number one, through the button, through Justice League versus... Uh, Suicide Squad through Metal, it, now Doomsday sure, Clock. 
all this stuff, but it feels like it's been so so quick, right? It does, yeah. Not uh, for me. <laughs> this thing forever. A long two years for you, Matt. You just yes. aged like fifty years comparatively. Yeah. I almost died just now, so like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I wasn't worried. I had faith you were going to pull through. I just wasn't Great. bothered if he lived or died. Uh, thanks, Connor. See, that's, you know... See, now I you regret it. Everything. Yeah, you yeah. regret everything you said earlier <laughs> on there. Um, so, yeah, and obviously lots of stuff coming up. Start Starting uh, against... I mean, I guess this is the start of year three, because this is the end of year two, essentially. Uh, where, you know, we got No Justice coming up, we got Bendis on Superman, we got Batman's Wedding, we have all these rumoured things that might end up being big. Um, and so I've got Catwoman coming, all these big things that are, that are shaking things up. So, stuff to look forward to. Um, what is not something to look forward to is Matt being absent next week. He's, he's missing uh, episode 101, yeah. unfortunately. Don't, don't feel bad for me, though, because I'm going to Disneyland, so it's fine. Yeah, he's, he's got happy things. So, uh, so that's, that's, that's the thing. But it's it. Lots of big things coming. Um, thank you to everyone who's supported us for the last 100 episodes. And with that, the the usual outro stuff. Uh, Twitter's at DC Comics Podcast. Get us on there for updates and uh, general retweets of things. Um, for from you know, usually I'll, you know, we'll retweet out like artwork that the creators are posting or you know news, news that's coming up. Yeah, all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Um, get us individually. I'm at Wibble eighty nine. Matt is at Matt of Steel fifty seven. Connor's at yep. Connor Ryan ninety four. Uh, so you check out our Twitters. Uh, and that's pretty much like subscribe give us a good review on iTunes or your podcast app of choice uh, all the usual stuff let us know yeah. what you thought of the books this week and uh, that's us so I mentioned Patreon so thank you it's been 100 episodes it's been a journey it's a milestone and we you know we've done this by doing it one per week there's been no gaps there's been no double shipping there's been none of this it's just been no once per week since the start and here we are so we'll see you next week for episode 101 and here's to 100 more so uh, I think I speak for everyone I say thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. We really appreciate it. Keep reading comics and always remember to never get lost in the Speed Force. One last time, long live the Legion. Mm-hmm.